Murray to be with us again, the American atheist who removed the Bible and the prayer from the public schools. She was with us a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I'll give you her address now so you don't have to write me. You can write her. Post Office Box 2117, Austin, Texas. The zip code is 78767. I'll mention that from time to time. We've invited the Reverend Walter Martin to be with us. Um, Mr. Martin is not an atheist. I don't even think he's agnostic. I'm not quite sure what he is. But according to what I have typed here, it tells us that he is a Baptist minister and director of the Christian Research Institute in Wayne, New Jersey. And uh, after a little while, we'll be taking some calls on Plaza 78866. And when we're ready to take the calls, it's going to take me a few minutes to get set up because we have uh, some new equipment in here, and it's really great, but it isn't going to work too well where I have three people, one to my right, one to my left, and I'm in dead center. About the only one that could really use the equipment would be me, right in dead center. So we'll try to work it out, and I think we'll be able to, so that you have an opportunity of speaking with Mrs. Murray, Madeline Murray O'Hare. Uh, you have been back to Austin, Texas. Yes, I went back to Austin, Texas, and uh, I had to get back to New York because I had the exciting opportunity to speak at St. John University. That was last night. Tonight? No, we already went through a new day. Oh, are we? Right. <laughs> yes, last, last night. night. Last night. All right. And uh, how was the uh, reception? <laughs> Stormy. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a, a good Roman Catholic institution, and uh, from time to time I do get uh, asked to appear at uh, various Catholic colleges and universities. The most receptive one was uh, Loyola, a Jesuit college. In Chicago. In Chicago. Mm -hmm. and, um, when you use the word receptive, what do you mean? Well, that at least I have an opportunity to say what I uh, want to express, and uh, then we have an interchange of ideas. At uh, St. John University tonight, I'm afraid that uh, once we got to the question and answer period, uh, no one was listening. So that uh, on several occasions I had to go ahead and repeat because they hear, the students sometimes hear what they want to hear, mm -hmm. or persons who are religious interpret in a way that they want to interpret subjectively. And no matter what I say, they'll read into it what they want to have me say. Were outsiders invited? Uh, I, yes, members students? of the community uh, were there, and uh, we had some back and forth with some members of the community, too. But it's always stimulating, and it's good, and I think... Were they at least respectful of your ideas, whether they agreed or not? Uh, tonight, um, not too much. Hmm. I was shocked to hear that on your appearance on Johnny Carson's show, which since I have learned, and he was quite unhappy about it, that the audience hissed you. Is this normal for an appearance of Alan Murray? Never. I have never had this. I have only had uh, a really objective hostility on two occasions. I speak to universities and colleges all over the country, and, uh, and I went to Harvard Law School at one time and had a tremendous ovation, standing ovation, uh, when I was discussing the uh, concept of separation of church and state in the First Amendment to the Constitution. But when I went back to an undergraduate uh, uh, level, and uh, was speaking on atheism, I had um, such a hostile audience that at one time I thought that I might be attacked physically by them. It was so hostile. And uh, the um, Harvard radio station asked me in the following day and apologized on the air for the behavior of the undergraduate students. Then the second uh, instance of hostility, of course, was on the Johnny Carson show. Mm -hmm. The uh, microphones are situated in such a way that um, my husband um, taped the program for me, and the hissing and uh, booing was much louder in the studio than it appeared on the uh, tape mm -hmm. that my husband had at home. And I, I presume this is because of the audience. Uh, well, they not controlled the, the microphones in the audience because at times, let us say, if there's a a tremendous laugh line, and and the man really is not finished with his story. They don't open up the pot, those microphones, because they don't want it to overshadow the rest of the lines on the part of the ah. comedian, so that you at home will enjoy his entire performance. And then, when he is through, so that uh, that at home you will hear the ovation for the man, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you'll hear the laughter and all. Then they will open up the audience microphones. But we, your husband was seated in the audience. No, no. Well, he wasn't was taking home? this in Austin, Texas. <laughs> then I don't know why it would sound uh, different on the tape than it would 
Well, in the uh, in the studio there, it was quite loud, but mm -hmm. uh, apparently, from what I hear, also of persons who just heard the show, uh, it was not as loud uh, when it was actually transmitted onto the air. And I presumed that I was speaking into a directional mic and that the mic was away from the audience and this is why it wasn't big. This, this is the only time I have ever had a very extremely rude uh, audience. And uh, I think that I would like to make a point about this because I do find that uh, whether they believe it or not, I think that New York people think they're sophisticated and progressive and all of that, but they are not. The East Coast here is the conservative part of our country. And uh, When you use the word conservative, you mean that politically? Uh, no, religion. Or in religion. In religion, mm -hmm. uh, this is the the basis of the conservative religious movement. It is not down south because the uh, audiences are much more receptive there. I had I had less trouble in Alabama, uh, and uh, well, Texas, Utah, Colorado, California, California especially, even Utah, which is absolutely dominated by the Mormon Church. I had no difficulty in it at all with audiences or um, the kind of reception that I get. But Harvard. And of course, the same state of Maryland, and uh, now Johnny Carson. Well, that's show. home state. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at home, away from home right yeah, now. I know that. I know that. Uh, we had, since you were on, Madeline, we had really a very exciting show. We had uh, Gary McCowan on, who has written a book that, uh, and he is a Catholic, incidentally. In fact, he attended the seminary for a while and. There was kind of a debate whether he was a dropout or a putout. <laughs> and uh, Gary is still a Catholic, but his uh, book, uh, Synod 67, I think was the title of it. Oh, I think I might have heard yeah, that. This was, uh, they were somewhat critical of him. When I say there, we had Father Gomar de Paul from home. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had uh, uh, the gentleman that you hate exquisitely, oh, yeah. Dr. Thomas Molnar. Mm -hmm. And we had Will Outler, whose father wrote the Bible. <laughs> and uh, I still was, think he's a very funny man. He is. Yeah. His father or Will? Will, Will. Outler. <laughs> but it got so rough. About 3.30 in the morning, somehow, Father Gomar de Paul uh, accused uh, uh, Will Outler of being a second-rate journalist. And Will comes up and says you're a second-rate priest. And, and uh, people started to pack their attaches. Uh, in all cases, they noticed, though, there were still some goodies from Carnegie, so everybody sat down again. You know what I mean? So we completed the sandwiches. And then they left later. But it was wild. I'm delighted to hear that. because a wild, wild show. I think that we do have to have confrontations uh, just constantly. Uh, in America, and I think that there has been entirely too much suppression of particular subjects, um, certainly in the name of sophistication. Uh, the entire subject of religion has not been explored in the way that it should be explored, because it's just, uh, oh, uh, or something like this, to talk about religion. Well, I must admit, this isn't, it isn't, this isn't true. It should be explored in depth. There's been only two stations that I've been associated with in my career, and it's run into thousands of hours, some 25,000 hours. One was W.O.R., which is owned by oh. the General Tire and Rubber Company, and the president of that is uh, Tom O'Neill, who was late, uh, knighted by the late Pope, <coughs> and even his interest in Catholicism never filtered down to tell me that I couldn't do controversial shows on religion. And uh, when an offer was made to me to come to NBC, everybody told me, don't go because you'll be in trouble. Uh, you know, they'll buy out your contract and all. But I must say that they have been absolutely marvelous and have never been critical, of, except sometimes of my performance, but never of the subject being discussed. Which, And that's when I've been here now. It'll be four years in August. And I think there's a lot more freedom in radio and TV today than oh, what it was there 10, 12 years ago. Well, the entire talk shows, I think, are uh, offering a challenge to the uh, just uh, horrendous material on television that uh, people do have to turn away from the television set nowadays because of the poor quality of the programs. And uh, you do pick them up, uh, certainly in, in automobile radios. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, many of the talk shows that I'm on, people will stop their automobiles and call from pay stations. They get so angry with me. 
But, we have uh, that happen too, that they'll call from a pay station and try to get on the air to voice their, view their opinions, voice their opinions. I want to ask you one question. <clears throat> you are not against anyone else being a believer in God, are you? Well, I have some very specific feelings on this, and it may take a moment or two to answer it. If somebody wants uh, to believe in religion, or nudism, or uh, just eating vegetables, or whatever they are interested in believing, they have a right to do this, certainly in our country. Uh, they have a right to build a church and go and worship in it. They have a right to build a church school and educate their children in it. They have a right to have universities. They can do anything that they want to do. But the thing that absolutely infuriates me is when they turn to me and say, now we want this absolutely tax-free, or we want you to give us some federal tax money in order to help support it. Then I say, ah, no, no. Or when they move out into the public arena and tell me that I will uh, pledge allegiance to, God, to the flag under God, uh, I don't think they should do this. Or when they say that under God has to be on our money. Or if they say, I have to go into a courtroom and uh, swear to tell the truth, so help me God. I can tell the truth without that oath. Uh, and when they move into the public arena and force their ideas upon me, I don't want it. Just as I feel that they should be free of uh, handling money that says, praise be to Allah on it. Mm -hmm. Or uh, go to a school and have their children um, uh, be blessed by Buddha or uh, have uh, a Pledge of Allegiance uh, to Fatima, something like this. When they do this, I think that they are infringing, and then I want to fight them, and I want to fight vigorously. But what they do, as long as they pay for it, that's their business. I don't care how much time they spend it, how much money, nothing. That's their business. One additional question, uh, Madeline, then I'll give the Reverend Warren Martin an opportunity to talking with you, and then a little later we'll possibly let our listeners talk to you on Plaza 78866. Is there a possibility that you're not an atheist, that you're agnostic? No possibility at all in this world. You see, uh, the word uh, agnostic was coined by Thomas Huxley in 1869, and it has very historical references. He was talking not alone uh, about Gnosticism, uh, scientific Gnosticism, which mm -hmm. he felt was rampant in England at that time. And he was saying, saying to the scientists that man is not going to find his salvation in knowledge of the kind that uh, was supposed to be the panacea for everything then. And uh, he coined the word agnostic to mean that he was against this kind of knowledge that would bring salvation. And he also pointed out that in Acts, uh, Paul had uh, come to the uh, 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 to a Grecian city and had seen there an unknown god, a statue to an unknown god. And Thomas Huxley's uh, definition of an agnostic at the time he made it was that this is a person who believes that there is a god, but who do, does not know the nature or the attributes of that god. And uh, an, uh, an atheist is not this kind of a person. Incidentally, that uh, definition has been corrupted. That's what I thought. So that mm -hmm. the man in the street thinks that it means that when one says one is an agnostic, that it means he does not know if there mm -hmm. is a God or not. But the theologians and the seminary schools and even the Roman Catholic Church knows what Huxley meant and they know what an agnostic is because they ac an agnostic is accepted in the church. An atheist is not. An atheist will say fundamentally that uh, anybody who really, absolutely says that they have proof that there is a God, this person is a little nutty. And anybody who would say that they absolutely have proof that there is no God, that person is equally as nutty. So since there is no proof one way or the other, and one has to uh, go ahead and live one's life anyway, the, uh, the atheist chooses to live his life and orders his life as if there was no God, no heaven, no hell, no prayer, no miracles, uh, no holy book, and is perfectly willing to go ahead and commit himself just to living as a human being. That sounded almost like the corrupted definition of agnosticism. Well, where you 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 said you're a little naughty if you believe, and you're a little naughty if no, you, if say, you that, say that you have positive that proof. proof either way, and if you say that you have positive proof there isn't a God, you're equally as nutty. Yeah, because nobody knows. There's no way of possibly. Uh, although like I'm agnostic, not well, atheist. Uh, like the corrupted term of agnostic, mm -hmm. but since uh, the atheists know what an agnostic really is, uh, we are never going to say that there is a God, but his attributes are unknown. We wouldn't take that position. Mm -hmm. Now, is there an organization that uh, 
you belong to, such as the free thinking? Well, I have found my own organization, which is the Society of Separationists, and uh, our uh, goal... Well, separation of church and state. Separation of church and state. There are, I think, right now in America, about 13 different organizations that are atheistic in uh, character, uh, but uh, these organizations are either afraid to admit it because of reprisals or they have some other ideas. I don't know. I've had arguments with them because I think they should come out and say they're atheists. The American Humanist Association is an atheist organization, mm -hmm. and they insist on saying that they're humanists uh, in order to cover up uh, the nature and purpose of what they're doing. I was on their board of directors for three years, and um, I couldn't stand it because I felt that we should identify ourselves for what we are. The ethnoculturists, these persons are atheists. Uh, why don't they say so? I would have to disagree with you with some of the humanists that I know. I did. Does the name Dr. Leroy Bowman mean anything to you? Of course. Mm -hmm. No, Leroy Bowman has been on my show many, many times, a hundred times at least. He's been on the board of directors, too. That's right. Now, he he has always been very outright in his statement that he does not believe in a god. And that certainly would indicate to me that he could be labeled an atheist. Yes, but you take a look at uh, the literature that the American Jewish Association gets out. I have not studied out. it, I will admit uh, that too. The uh, uh, literature that they get out is uh, quite timid, quite timid. And uh, what they do is they take uh, almost a straight communist line uh, on this, and I mean in this relationship. The uh, Communist Party, incidentally, in America hates my guts pretty bad because of this. Uh, they feel that the only way to fight religion uh, is to uh, fight it through emphasis of the positive aspects of science. Mm -hmm. And this is what the American Humanist Association does. All they do is emphasize the positive aspects of science. Uh, they never go into uh, an analysis of uh, religion. They never try to do anything in relation to the history of religion, the psychology of religion, the literature of religion, comparative religion, and what I call the psychopathology of religion, because there's a tremendous amount of pathology in religion. Uh, they never go into this. Instead, they have a constant um, emphasis of just uh, scientific ventures. Now, uh, then the other, some of the other organizations call themselves secularists. There's the USA, the United Secularists of America. They're atheists. There's the rational, Ameri ARA, the American Rationalist Association, and rationalists are atheists. There's the free thinkers, uh, of the, what is Joseph Lewis? Free, free thinkers. thinkers. World? I didn't free know that, I think free thinkers. Uh, the free thinkers society, mm -hmm. and these are atheists. Uh, then there's something called the Friendship Liberal League down in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they're atheists. Uh, the Truth Seeker out of uh, San Francisco is an atheist group. And they call themselves yes. truth seekers, and of course, Paul Krasner is an atheist, and he calls himself a realist, and he labels his magazine the realist. But uh, incidentally, the, the entire inception of the realist was as an atheist magazine. And then, of course, you have Lyle Stewart with his independent, and uh, this is a, an atheist philosophy uh, throughout the independent. Uh, magazine. Well, I happen to know Lyle Stewart yeah. very well, and I would not call him an atheist. I would say that he is a uh, possibly not a believer. I was going to say non-believer, but I don't want to use that one. And I know Lyle very well. He's been on the program. Well, they label themselves by different right. terms, is what I'm saying. But you have a teenage son, isn't that true? Um, yes and no. Uh, my well, son was a teenage when he started, right. but now the teenage boy who was involved in the Bible prayer is 22 years old of age, and my wee little boy is 13. All right, now I want to talk about the 22 year old. All right, go ahead. When when you gave birth to this young man, did you and uh, Mr. Murray uh, send him to church or Sunday school or anything? Were you believers at that time? No, uh, but uh, no, no. I have been a non-believer since I've been about uh, 13 years of age. I've been a, a, as soon as I found out the proper word for myself. I became an atheist, but until then I thought that I was a heretic for a while, mm -hmm. uh, because I have good um, uh, background in uh, upper middle class, and we just didn't run into words like atheist and agnostic. And I was in the army, as a matter of fact, when I ran into an atheist doctor, and we were having a discussion one night, and she said, well, you know what you are, you're nothing but an atheist. And I was so glad I had found that word, because then I knew what I was from there on in. But uh, when, my, uh, when both of my children were born, my parents told me that they would have neither child in their home ever unless I had them baptized immediately because my family is Presbyterian 
and they believe in the infant's damnation, that mm -hmm. if the child is not immediately baptized, and the child would die even in a day, that if the child was not baptized, the child would be consigned to everlasting hell. Uh, so uh, my parents insisted, for instance, that I baptize the children, and I said to them, do you understand that I don't believe in this, I think it's nonsense, and the only thing this means is that the child will have a wet head and he doesn't know what's going on. He's only two or three days old. And they said, well, still, we want you to baptize the child. So I had both of my children baptized. Mm -hmm. in the well, this was for your folks, really. Yeah, for my folks. But now um, uh, my husband would go to church, my parents would go to church, and I... Mr. Murray was not an atheist? No. Uh, was he a believer? Yes. Or he yeah. wasn't, didn't make up his mind? No, he, 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 really knew. he belonged to a church. <laughs> he knew. What church did he belong Roman Catholic. Oh, was this difficult? To no, I don't have any trouble. This is the funny thing. He had the trouble. <laughs> I never have any trouble with this. Uh, my parents had a tremendous amount of trouble with my being an atheist, but I never had any trouble seeing that uh, they were a little bit loony, you know, and, and believed in religion. It doesn't bother me that much. Right, I think that's being unfair because we have <laughs> the Reverend Walter Mark who is. Well, I think he's a little loony. Well, I, I agree with you, too, but he's, he's, he's a nice loony. <laughs> For a man that hasn't said a word, <laughs> Murray knows an awful lot about me. No, Reverend, you're not here to talk tonight. You're not here to talk. I just thought you'd like to sit. One would gather that general opinion. Yes. That's right. <laughs> I would just like to find out from you, Reverend Walter Martin, and I've talked with you, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 times you've been on the program. Do you really have any proof that there is a God? Well, of course, remember what Madeline said. <laughs> I have a that. Well, according to, according to Mrs. Murray, uh, I don't know whether they call her Madeline or not, but uh, according to Mrs. You Murray, might at the, at the beginning, but by 4 o'clock. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, I have listened to her and um, tried to keep up with her, although she's a difficult person to keep up with since she moves around so rapidly. This, of course... All has to be has to uh, organized religion. Yes, I, I might say that uh, I might say that this might be hastened by the fact that it's more difficult to hit a moving target. I don't know. <laughs> but um, at least um, uh, I think uh, that there is what we would call uh, a little a priori judgment. And that means uh, that uh, nothing more than uh, prejudging a certain thing uh, on the basis of one's own prejudices. Now, nobody is free of prejudice, and uh, nobody's mind is free of uh, logical implications drawn from experience and from the world in which we live. Uh, when you use the word evidence, Mrs. Murray realizes immediately, as a lawyer, it means one thing in the canons of evidence in the courtroom. It means another thing to a scientist in a laboratory. It may mean something quite different to an archaeologist reconstructing sections of a civilization, to a philosopher, Logically, it may mean something quite different. And uh, to a theologian, uh, it may be a composite of all of them. To a theologian, it's out of this world. Well, now, I'm not this always true, you see. Uh, I think that... Um, first, let me make a statement about uh, some of the things Mrs. Murray said. And so, Maybe, I, I wonder if you could uh, cooperate with the moderator for at least five minutes or so. I'll rephrase the question again. Yep. Reverend Walter Martin, do you have definite proof that there is a God. Oh, definitely. I see. I'll be willing to discuss it. Incidentally, which, which proof is this? Which, one, which argument are you As I just said a moment ago, I think it's a mosaic, and I think that it can be argued from specific <laughs> viewpoints, and I'm willing to take a whirl at it, but um, I think it that... It wouldn't uh, be a tapestry. Uh, no, it's mosaic. mosaic. because it's hard. <laughs> no. Hard to oh, because it's because because derived it's from a, Moses, I guess. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, no, a lot of good things were derived from Moses, incidentally. But um, I think that uh, in order to really honestly evaluate the society of separationists, which I have uh, a copy courtesy of Mrs. Murray, the aims of the society and so forth. No, I wouldn't give you anything, believe me. I'm sure that you got it from the station. <laughs> uh, well, it just said for Reverend Martin on here, and it was uh, attached to it. I guess it has to do with you. This is true. If you have anything from this, I never give anything to religious people. It's useless. Well, see, now here, of course, <laughs> here, of course, you see, is part of the problem that I think we face. Uh, you made a definition of an agnostic before, which is not a classical definition, and Huxley is antedated somewhat by Aristotle. He is antedated somewhat by Socrates. He is antedated by a great many philosophers. Are you saying that they said that they were agnostic? No, no, just let me finish. The usage of the word in Greek, uh -huh. uh, agnosis, is not what Huxley is talking about. The word agnosis, classically in religion, and as a professor of comparative religions, 
uh, former uh, president. Notice that. Notice you throw the screen at you right away. Well, uh, Mrs. Murray has four, so I'm not, uh, she and I are even, so we're not fighting the battle uh, uh, in that area. I'm just saying, I think I know in this area where a vice speaker, she would know it all where she is. You're speaks. certain. Tonight you're only thinking that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to phrase it in a legal context because I have seen Mrs. Murray on cross-examination, and I don't <laughs> intend to get cross-examined. <laughs> if I'm going to answer, I'm going to answer to what I said, not what you're going to try and make me say. Oh, so let me get you want to bet? Before, well, 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 before yeah, it's yeah. finished, she'll try, sure. Uh, <laughs> agnostic, simply by definition, is not what Mrs. Murray says. Agnostic, by classical definition, historically, simply means a person who has a gnosis, no knowledge of the situation. Now, and he was talking specifically no, about the gnosis. Well, could I just get that guy to make a fool of him? <laughs> Of course, you're not prejudiced at all. That's Old I impartial Charlie Brown. <laughs> John always says he's behind me, and I say, yeah, far behind me. But um, the point is that the word agnostic itself classically means, I just don't know. Now, Huxley's use of oh, it is... No. Now, no, it can be proven very easily, simply by going back and checking. Mm -hmm. We can write down anything here today, for atheist means against... Uh, a C is a no, it just means no God. It, uh, no, well, I'm not going to accept this because well, no, I don't Murray, have proof that there Mrs. is no God. No, I know, I understand that, but Mrs. Murray, we, we will have to admit, won't we, that terms... Well, you say you have to admit, well, don't they, include me in Well, I think we'll have to admit it if we're going to have dialogue, no. that terms in context must be defined or there is no dialogue. No, there are a couple things that are going here. Uh, first off, you have, you're speaking to a community of people who has some very um, uh, what popularly held opinions about either what a religious person is or an agnostic or an atheist. And you cannot get into a very uh, um, esoteric uh, description of what this person is or is not or how it's derived from Greek because uh, but there's no see, meaning to uh, no, it. There's a know. problem here that has to be solved or you can't have a dialogue and the problem is very simple. Either, is that we either, accept the definition that you give. No, we accept a definition which has been classically used and which people generally know. The word know. agnostic has not been classically used in relation to the, the existence of God. It wasn't. It was coined deliberately by Huxley in order to have this particular definition given to it that he wanted to give it at that time. He may have now, coined that word was used as against and Gnosis is knowledge, not knowledge of God or religion or anything. I'm else. aware of this. It is just no knowledge. I'm, this is I'm aware. What this word means, and it could be no knowledge. I'm aware of it, ma'am. I, I studied I studied Greek for 10 years. I'm aware of the usage of the term and the derivatives of it. I'm not trying to argue that point. I'm simply saying that you're tying it to Huxley. Is not an accurate study of the word. The word means I have no knowledge. I don't care when this word was taken out of its original context because I can be an agnostic about radio waves. I can right. be an agnostic. So what you're, uh, I am saying that this what is a mean? very special religious or anti or non-religious interpretation by one man, Thomas Huxley, no. in 1869. No. Before that time, it was not used in that kind of context. Ma'am, the word agnosis has been used historically long before Huxley was ever thought of or in, born. In relationship to religion? To religion, yes. Religion? I in which it, I, well, I, well, I, you I, don't I, know it because you're not a student of comparative religions, and I am. I beg your pardon, I am a student. Do you hold a degree in it? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, see. <laughs> well, I'm not an expert in your law. I'm not an expert in your law. I'm not an expert in law either, but well, I am you an expert an LLB, in common sense. And compared to my knowledge of law, you're an expert. And compared to your knowledge of comparative religion, yeah, I am. He's and uh, I can tell you, I, I can tell you right now what the word yeah, means. He's showing himself as an learned man and all that. Well, I'm not. I'm just cheap <laughs> trick. I uh, just get down to the business of the hand. Mrs. Murray, you know what's so disturbing? The fact that you have a group of cliches which have been neatly cataloged for every time you are pressed into a position for a simple definition, you immediately flip off a sentence which is supposed to dismiss no, it. No, no, no. You haven't dismissed We have it. an idea of agnosticism here that uh, was a very, very definite uh, um, terminology that has been used over an extended period of time by theologians uh, derived from Thomas Huxley's definition of this, particularly in England and America. Ma'am, I have already told you that long before Thomas Huxley, theologians were aware of the term agnostic and knew it and discussed it. Are you it happy with this? If you are, I'm not happy with this. You can this. I win this one. You no, win this have it. No, all I'm, all I'm looking for is just one important. Uh, if Mrs. Murray what ever concedes a point, if Mrs. Murray ever concedes a point, do you have definite knowledge? 
that the word agnostic means what you said. Are you, do you have absolute proof of it, that it was never used by theologians? Nobody has absolute proof of anything. You can't even prove that you're sitting here, and you know it. I so can't. No. Huh. Well, I can I could prove very easily right now. Uh, so uh, we get back to no, no, no. What we're doing is getting off on a wee little problem here that it's not related. It's a problem to what of we're definitions talking. of terms. No, it is not a problem of definitions. Sure it is, of terms. because it's, for a, you, it's a red herring no, no, which you, takes away from the central subject. Mrs. Murray, what you say is this: you say agnostic means so and so, and there's no such thing as an well, agnostic. Let me let me just enter in here a moment yeah. while you they're the no no bearing you hold on at all. She did not say she's an agnostic. She so why debate no it? She said agnostic. she's an atheist. Now, do you want to debate that one? Now, I'm going to discuss atheism with her, but her usage of agnostic... But that's what she claims she is. But her yes. usage of agnostic, <laughs> you see, mm. puts you at a disadvantage when you start to talk about atheism because there's a very distinct difference between the two. Now, Bertrand Russell... Well, I want to play with my definition tonight. How do you like them apples? I don't care what your definition is. I want to play with my definition, and I want people to know what I think that definition is. In Could I ask you a question? Tonight. Could I ask you a question? Ask if two you if they're went, small. All right. If you went, I'll, give you, I'll give you a short one. If you went into a courtroom yeah. in a context of a case yeah. and said that to a judge, we're going to play a buster by my rules. Never mind what it is. This is all that an attorney ever does. No, this is all that an You're attorney dead. ever does. No, sir. You're, they'll cite enough no, no. to throw you out well, of you court. don't know anything about law. And this is, oh, your, this this is where you I fall down. No, because when an attorney goes into court, he says, Now, Judge, I'm going to show you something. And what I'm going to show you is this, that my client killed this preacher without malice. And uh, that he was temporarily insane at the time, you see. <laughs> and then he goes and he sets up this premise and he proceeds <clears throat> to prove it. This is exactly what an attorney does. He says, these are the grounds I'm going to play on and I'm going to use this... Supposing the judge said, define corpus delecti, Mrs. Murray. Oh, come on. What would you say? It's a delectable corpse. What would you say? Seriously, what would you say? No, this this has no meaning. It does have meaning. No, each what would you one say? of the times we have... No, no, we have a I want a definition in a context. I want a definition in a context. No, I, we're going to talk about agnosticism. No, we're going to atheism. talk first about uh, language. I have no intention. Define in a courtroom for me as a lawyer. You're in your own field now. You're safe. I'm a judge. No, asking I'm you. not going What to is talk. corpus delecti? It doesn't matter, you see. It does in a courtroom. It does not yeah, but matter. but this is not a courtroom. John, it does not you're matter making the whole point. In this context, It does. No. Mrs. Murray wants to play language by her No, rules. no, no. no. So words lose all their meaning. You're going to go into a courtroom, and I'm going to be the judge and say, do you define insanity? Oh, come on. This is a... Uh, We're the, taking the commonly accepted terms. One of the terms. things that, that uh, has to do with, uh, with uh, court and law and everything else are semantics. And one of the things... And I have no intention of in getting into a semantic... But Mrs. Murray, tonight. you will admit... If you, you don't want to accept the definition of agnosticism in relation to what I'm talking about tonight, let's drop this from the subject. I'll, because I'll, drop, uh, I'll, drop, it, I'll drop it if you'll just answer this question. Are you willing to admit that in specific contexts, words always mean the same thing? No. Of course not. They don't. We just have now have a tremendous feud going all over the world as to when a person is dead, when a person's heart can be used for transplant. What is death? And nobody knows what death is. We have this whole idea of what is God. And you go out and you ask 200 different theologians what God is. One says it's energy, and one says it's love, and one says it's Jesus Christ, and another says it's the Bible, and another says it's this long, bushy-haired guy sitting up on a clock. Nobody knows. These, these words cannot be interchanged because they have significant meaning for different people. And the least, the, the most that we can do is try to um, uh, reach persons knowing what newspapers carry, knowing what magazines carry, knowing what radio stations carry, knowing what religious programs are on the air. We have to use these terms in a, in a kind of a way that everybody will understand that that's it. Do you think, uh, Reverend Martin, that we might move away from the... Oh, I, I, I've, gotten to, the I've, gotten, I've gotten to the point, the main point that I wanted to get from Mrs. Murray was that uh, you can never depend upon the meaning of a word. Uh, she has a total anarchy of language, which means that any time you go into a discussion on any point, the moment that the definition suits her, she will change the definition. And now, you, the end that, of it. that is a completely idiotic statement. No, I don't think so. I think it's factual. No, now, you no, spoke no. for almost 
17 minutes, and I haven't had but eight, so I'd like Bob, to finish you've been on here 50 times, according to... Yeah, uh, but your press coverage is much uh, better than mine. I, you've got much better press coverage. So that so. you have a bigger audience tonight, because I... Oh, oh, no. Me? Me? <laughs> me? Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, John, John has got the... Uh, you know, 1,640 yeah. years, Christianity has had the floor uh, without anybody really to uh, confront them or debate them. And every single time mm. I'm invited to a radio station someplace... Uh, always, two or three, no, I'm sorry, two or three ministers are brought in to debate every single word that I utter. And this is the most fantastic thing because, really, are you so unsure of yourself that you can't permit me on the air alone? Mrs. Murray, if I was unsure of myself, I wouldn't be here tonight. Oh, well, I'm here because you, I am sure. You know. I, I would like to finish my statement, if I may. I'm not in the cross examination yet. <laughs> it's not an idiotic statement because you made a statement a moment ago. Uh, which philosophically you'd be sunk by any university you ever lecture at. I hope you never made it when you said you can't prove you're here and that no term means what it means in a given context. For instance, can you ever think of any given context when hydrogen two parts and oxygen one is not water? Oh, now, come on. You're trying no, to erudite. And right. erudition no. has nothing to do no, with knowledge wait or, or belief. I'm asking you, can you think of any situation in all experience where hydrogen two parts, oxygen one is not water? I have no idea because I haven't well, been around from the you... very No, no, I haven't been around from the very beginning. For instance, there's much uh, evidence that perhaps gravity was not always measured uh, at the figure given today for gravity. We are uh, passing by the point of your own statement here. You say, the atheist materialist philosophy declares that the cosmos is devoid of eminent conscious purpose, mm -hmm. that it is governed by its own inherent immutable and impersonable law. In so far as we know this, that you contradicted yourself. No, no. Well, there is no. There is. Of course, you do. There, it doesn't. No. You mean for you there is no need? No, wait, you see, you, you, you have no need to. Uh, can, I, can, can I make a statement? Yes. Uh, it's only I'm only quoting Mrs. Murray. She says that the universe is governed by its own inherent, immutable, oh. impersonal That's law. Right. Now, how can you have inherent and immutable law? When you can't so define, far, wait a minute, when, we wait, have wait, 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 uh, a living you can't even that. define the reality of hydrogen two parts, oxygen one, but you know the universe is governed by inherent immutable laws. How did you arrive at that? Moment, though, do I use such nonsense words in yes, transfiguration you do. or heaven or hell? You're changing God? the ground of argument. No, no, I'm not. You are never going to see me when we say when we say H two O. We know what we mean. When what you, you mean? say transubstantiation, you don't have well, the same I don't idea say what I you're don't talking say about. I don't say or it. Or when you talk about eternity, these are nonsense words. Why is Einstein have, nonsense? Einstein. He's nonsense. Einstein was not talking about this in the terms that I'm using it now. How do you know? Nonsense. How do you know? Did you read Einstein? Well, this doesn't make any difference to you. It makes Whether a lot of I difference. Read you do this all the time on your programs. You make a statement. You say, he wasn't talking about that. Einstein happened to have made a statement, a number of statements that you're not even aware of, in which he and spoke of it. Yes, I am. That research is my business. Einstein said that the universe was governed by a divine mind. And Einstein said, I, I quote, quote it, as much my, Einstein I, uh, in relation to this could as I you can, could where I, he no, is you also can't. saying no. that he does not accept this in... in, in now, uh, Mrs. Human Murray, Mrs. Human. Murray, Mrs. Murray, let me bring this point out. Albert Einstein, in his later years, in his reflections on science, made quite a number of very interesting and cogent statements concerning his Which theory of... Which your theory, no, so I'm, you like system. No, I'm just trying to make a statement about Einstein historically. At least... Grant me the you courtesy. You mean hysterically. Now, you see, it's impossible to have dialogue with somebody who interprets everything you say before you can even finish a sentence. I don't think it's fair. I don't do it to you. I treat you as a lady. No, you which you, Yes, I do. You move before the evening's over. No, you're going to try and make me not do it, <laughs> but I would never forget that you're a lady. Now, I don't agree with the people who hissed you on the Johnny Carson show because you would thrive on hatred since you really hate religion. No, you see... And I'm not going to hate you. You don't but now let me finish. You let don't know finish. what you're talking about. Uh, let me finish. You cannot tell the time to be No, I'm not going to permit it. Because well, then, if you're not going to permit me to finish the sentence, I'll tell you. You claim that she thrives on hate. She does. Well, when I you don't know what to comment on it. Now let me finish. I'm finished the sentence. All right, well, finish the sentence. That's on the Carson, Carson show where there are hisses and boos. Uh, and on the program with the, uh, may I mention the, on the Burke uh, yeah, sure. TV Alan show, Burke. Alan Burke show, uh, Whenever there is violent reaction uh, to uh, Mrs. Uh, Murray, Mrs. Murray assumes immediately the garb of a martyr. 
And she says, I want to work. I want a job. I'll do anything. No, no, I'm not going to permit this to toss because of all things that I am not, it is a martyr. You I have try no make yourself intention. One. No, no, I have you no intention. You yourself as a woman that put public I out have of public no schools. intention of ever giving my life at any place along the line for uh, this kind of uh, confrontation of ideas. No, no. I love life, and I love to live it, and I intend to live it richly and fully and deeply right down the line. I'm not the least bit interested in being a martyr at any at any time, because life is too important, too real, too earnest, I'm not too speaking here. of martyr as dying. Well, see, words do have other meanings, you see, by your own definitions. Oh, no, no. If it has another meaning, then we have anarchy of words and we have no communication. Well, you you just, can only have one but meaning you, to one word. I, you just no, I didn't so. say that. You listened to the tape. I didn't say it. I said to you, in certain contexts... Did you spend your whole life listening to the tapes that you've been on? No, to you. And taking it apart word to by you, word. To you, to John. Not, why not part language the is, Language and words is a business for a lawyer if you're a good one. If you don't know bi language, you have no business being in law. I happen to be a linguist in the sense of the meaning of terms. As I no, no, you're an apologist for religion. Could I and enjoy as an apologist for You're religion, supposed you to moderate this. Now, do I get a chance to talk? The words or are you on her team? I know. <laughs> Please. Okay, I've got to talk then. Now you, you, right away, you're labeling me. And I think you're being unfair. You're a guest of mine. Shh. And you're takes. insulting our moderator by labeling me. Don't you no. want to apologize? I, uh, I couldn't do that. My conscience would bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make your point. I'm going to tell you, in fact, I'm going to give you two minutes. My point is, Mrs. Murray delights in trying to needle people who are trying to talk to her and trying to reason, trying to find out, asking questions about things. She needles them and makes off-the-cuff remarks, and some of them are, are, are aimed at uh, conveying an impression, a psychological impression. She's a former psychiatric social worker. She's aware of the meaning of terms in language. She snickers about clergymen being loony. She deliberately uh, holds back on the word nut and then changes it to minister. She's well aware of the, how this affects an audience. Now, I don't mind being called loony or a nut for the sake of Jesus Christ. I just like to know what her excuse is. <laughs> I've got a good you know, excuse. There, isn't even, there wasn't even a Jesus Christ. Right. Well, now, you see, there's a... You see? Well, you see, there's... An, so there's, you go off on all of these things that have an accident. Madeline, please. Madeline, please. Madeline, please. Madeline, please. And Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Murray, uh, Mrs. Yes, Murray uh, thanks for the two minutes. Uh, Tell us how you've been saved. Uh... Well, it wouldn't be difficult, but John would be terribly upset to take his valuable time. No, 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 please. I'd like to hear about it. Fine. I want you I'd to take him and talk about the same thing. I'll be, 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 be delighted to, and I won't beat my breast uh, about it at all. I'll simply uh, state it, but before I do state it, I intend to get this point across. Mrs. Murray's own statement about atheism and materialism and statements about the universe is devoid of eminent conscious purpose and governed by impersonal and immutable law, mm -hmm. she can't make by virtue of her own vocabulary because she can't define immutable law. She can't define purpose. She can't define any of these things because every time you force her into a context, Mrs. Murray will change I'm the meaning of the word in its context. Now, as far as me, as far as I'm concerned personally, I'm delighted to speak for Jesus All of your words have concrete uh, I would like right to. I would like to say this. I would like to say this. I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am no better than Mrs. Murray is. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Oh, dear. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Who? who saved you? Great who? Do we have the common courtesy of intercourse? No, because... Or was I asked the question? The air. Was I asked the question? Was I asked the question? No, but really... Was when, I asked the no. question? When you go in then and you say that me talking the about the grace John, of Jesus you want, Christ, you don't you even know what you're talking about. Will you permit me? Please. Please. Mrs. Murray says right here, the aims of our society is to promote freedom of thought. I assume that since she's a lawyer... Rational uh, thought. ...by your definition. That's why you're dangerous, Mrs. Murray. Because by your definition, rational thought is the suppression of my right to be religious. And you would suppress me, I'm sure, if you had the opportunity. No. Uh, I wouldn't suppress a nudist either. If you want to be nutty, why you be nutty? You see, we're back to the words nutty. again, you see. Oh. I could get on a program and I could say, Mrs. Murray is nutty. I could get on and make fun of Go atheists. Go ahead. Why? You thrive on it. You little. can't make fun of atheists because reason I don't want to. to be on our I don't side. want to make you fun of atheists. You can't make fun of atheists or you can't even argue. I don't want to make fun of an atheist. We happen to have the... I don't. You happen to have a, a tremendous ability to keep talking. But aside from that, not much. I'm not able to get in a word. I've had you on many uh, times, Wally, so don't give me that. Uh, you oh, I've been able to get her a few jibes in here. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. Uh, you talk about freedom of thought. But here I'm expressing freedom of thought. I said... No, no, you're, a, you're expressing psychosis. Pure and simple right down the line. Are you a qualified diagnostician? 
I am qualified. Diagnosed are you a qualified? You are not. Yes. You are not. You have no degrees or no training to qualify you. What is psychosis? Well, you should tell me you use the word. This is whether or not you are in touch with reality, and religion is not in touch with reality. How do you know? Kiddo. How do you know, kiddo? Come on. You're How do you talk, know? You're talking about you the grace of Jesus prove. Christ. Yeah. You don't even you couldn't define this for anything in the world I can. except in other I can. spiritual I can. nebulous spiritual I can. terms. I can def I can define it. Well, wait. Uh, Very simply. I want I'm anxious because I just <laughs> broke the the <laughs> point on my pencil and I want to get it resharpened so I can make notes. I thought you were sharpening your fangs. <laughs> <laughs> I I think uh, Reverend Martin, that uh, we're losing a really a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to uh, talk with Madeline Murray in, instead of uh, going through. Incidentally, I, I wish you would because I myself I've heard this too, and, and I'm not saying that you don't know what you're talking about, but I must admit I don't understand it. What is it meant through the grace of Jesus Christ? The word grace in the New Testament usage simply means something that's unmerited as a gift from God. I started to say before I was interrupted that Christ redeemed me by his grace. That is, I didn't deserve it. And it was a gift, <laughs> redemption, through faith in the cross. Well, no, wait, no, no, it's, it's just, the word comes from a New Testament context. No, I'm asking you to explain this to me with the mentality of about a ten-year-old child. Don't tell me to read the Bible now. Now, I, I want do you to an tell me... Yes, go ahead. Right, do it with an illustration. You are brought into a courtroom guilty of a crime. Oh, I'm never brought into a courtroom not guilty yet. of a crime. Uh, so then don't tell me I'm brought into a courtroom. That's a poor analogy. Well, uh, would you not? I have been indicted for a crime, no, and no. now I'm going to trial. You're up to right. You're innocent. Can, Can you let me finish? Shush. Well, well, you've already told me I'm that you're brought into a courtroom, guilty of a crime, you're up for sentencing. Before I can say the sentence, you're up for sentencing, you're already correcting me. I see. All right. Can you be convicted and be brought in for sentencing? Yes. Thank you. Yes. You concede that, Mrs. Murray. That's one thing you will concede. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't get a confession. I got a laugh. But that's, that's better than what I've been getting. All right. Now. Well, you brought it here for a laugh. Yeah. Oh, you got me here for a laugh, but the Lord's got me here for a reason. Now. Oh, dear. You're coming up, you're coming up for, uh, for sentencing. Yes. You've been convicted of a crime. Yes. Now, if you can imagine a person with the power to intercede for you, though you are guilty, and to actually bear the punishment which you deserve for that crime, this is grace. And this is what God did for us in Christ on the cross. This is what Abraham Lincoln scoffed at as saying the Christian um, <sighs> method of salvation. You know, uh, what you about this crime that John, can I, uh, was the original can I, uh, sin of Adam and Eve, wasn't it? No. Can I on, finish? This is the original sin can of Adam and Eve. Can I finish? Well, go, let, let him finish, Madeline. Oh, John, let me both learn something, Madeline. Well, we can give it a try. I mean, it may be hard, but we can give it a try. <laughs> uh, the point that I'm trying to make is you ask for definition of grace, that's it. An unmerited gift. That you don't earn. I must say I don't understand it, but nevertheless you've tried hard. Because and it's not. We can't understand that. I get, well, I have true. to concede it, but we won't. Yeah. Uh, you said it. I didn't. Yeah, the point right. is, I must admit, I'm very right. stupid. I don't understand that. All right. And I think that the average person hearing that phrase doesn't know what you're talking about, and I don't think you do either. But you go ahead. I simply illustrated the fact of what grace was, and I gave how did you illustration. How did you uh, see this light? In other words, what happened? Did you get a peculiar feeling or no, something that day? No, no, no. By reading the scriptures. And by seeing other people live the Christian life, I began to do what the Scripture You know of anybody that lives the Christian yes, life? Yes, I do. Yes. I sought to find out whether or not this was true. How would you know when a person was living a Christian can life? Can I finish? No. You have to. I want to ask you a question. You know, Look, I do an interview show, Walter. Yes, John, but you... I don't let you come up to make speeches. Wait a minute. You're going to... So this is an interview. Now, wait a minute. Don't, don't get yourself all worked up. You asked you a question. You have God on your side. You asked you a question. You have me on your side. Oh, I knew that before I got here. All right. You asked me a question. Before I can answer it, you asked me a second one. You're using terms, and I asked you, what does that mean? I defined it. Right. No. Now tell me about these Christian yeah, but you people. Define, do you define it with other nonsense terms? When you say that God took away, or, or Christ, through his... Uh, uh, dying on the cross took away your sins. This is ridiculous. Why? You weren't even because in you don't believe. Then. No, you weren't in existence then, and uh, Christ isn't his historic Mrs. Murray, person. And the whole thing is Mrs. Just Murray. The statement you just made: Christ is not an historic person. 
is a very interesting one. Would you care to document for us the proof of have the non-existence of Jesus oh, Christ? Oh, come on. Nobody ever proves the negative, and you know this. So wait, I don't a have wait a moment. Wait a moment. You wait bring a moment. them up. Wait a moment. You prove the negative. Wait a moment. Negative. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. If you're going to say that Jesus Christ never existed, if you're going to say this, then you're going to have to answer to people who agree with your position who affirm vigorously the historical evidence that he did exist. There's no historical evidence of Christ, and you know it. Now, don't be asinine and you... There isn't any historical evidence. There is no historical evidence. The only evidence that there is is in the mythology of the Old Testament, which nobody can understand, mm -hmm. uh, and in which a, a person is described in one manner in one chapter and another manner in another chapter. Mm -hmm. Christ is probably the most mixed-up person in the world if you take a New Testament... Do you believe in the historical existence of Jesus of Nazareth? No. And not, what, it isn't a matter of not believing or disbelieving it. It's a matter of fact that there is no what historical, archaeological, cultural, or okay. sociological, and no proof right, whatever please, that he ever existed. Please, can I ask you a question? What would you consider evidence of his existence? As a lawyer, what would you consider evidence? It doesn't matter what I would consider as evidence. Well, I'm trying to communicate with no, no, you. No, no, no. The thing is, what is there? And then you take an analysis of what is there. Now, the Romans were very fine historians. They really were. They kept a beautiful set of records in their Senate. If there ever had been a trial of Jesus Christ under Ptolemy's Pilate, it would most probably be in, the, in their records. There is nothing. There is absolutely no historic proof. The, there's a, an interpolation in Josephus. Wait a minute. That's and interesting everybody point. understands. Who understands? Interp every single Have you ever traced on. back the antiquity of Josephus's copies? Among other things, you have what? Fifteen years ago, and then I'm done with it. No, I mean, it's it's how far back have you gone with Josephus? I I don't remember. No, I can tell you, you don't. I know why you don't remember because the oldest manuscripts of Josephus, dating below the Middle Ages, do have come on the middle below the Middle Ages, below the Middle Ages. Tacitus can was I? Tacitus did not have a reference to any Christos before Oregon, and you know it. Between who? Before who? Oregon? Well, this is the... I'm, I'm very poor with my pronunciation. Not only poor with your pronunciation, you don't know anything about history. O-R-I-G-E-N. I don't know how to pronounce it. Well, how, Origen happened to be a second century church father. It just so happens that at the time that he was writing, he didn't know of this reference to Tacitus. The point and that I'm, the point that I'm right making... And right down the no, line... You're not going to get me... You're not going to get me... There is none. You're not going to get off the historical point. Let, let, let him... Let uh, 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 Reverend Martin... Go ahead, uh, Walter. You're not going to get off the historical... So go ahead. Well, even David Copperfield, too, I don't care. Mrs. Murray, let, let him, let him Mrs. Finish Murray, point, please. the point still remains that the oldest manuscripts of Josephus, the oldest, contain the reference to Jesus of Nazareth as an historic person. I can't help that. There's still Middle Ages. You just finished saying this. But I'm trying to bring the point out that you're arguing from a negative. I have the evidence that it's there. You have no evidence that it isn't. You don't have any evidence at all dating from the time of Christ's supposed occupation of the earth. You have nothing. May I? And you know it, and I know That's it. That's not you true. You can't name one. May I? May I name one? I think if you if you if you can name one, yeah. you will be a living monument to God from here on in. Because the historians have I'm a living this, monument now. No, by the, the historians have thought this for for how many thousands of years? Mrs. Murray, how many hundreds of Mrs. years? Mrs. Murray, you As don't a matter of fact, now wait a minute. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were the discovered, everybody was excited because the they thought, oh, let, I'm let him let him make his question. point. Please, I'll make the point. I just want to make a point. That Go ahead. You made a blunt and all-encompassing statement. You said. He doesn't exist as a historic personage. There's nothing back there in the early contemporary period of Christ, the first and second centuries, to prove this, so forth. All right, now, let me ask you a question. The Jews, who at the time were responsible for the death of Christ, and we'll get into the argument of all Jews, but the Jews at that time were responsible well, wait for the death of Christ. How could they when he didn't exist? Wait, 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 wait a moment. Can even I if think? he existed, the fact is, even the, uh, the Pope has, uh, has offset that right. comment. Yes, but the High Court of Israel confirmed it. Oh, come on. Oh, now, so we got an anti-Semite. Can I well, I don't care. Well, Mrs. On. Murray, be careful. I am not anti-Semitic. What? Well, you well, can't do <laughs> anything else when you come up with Mrs. this. Mrs. Murray, be careful. As a, lawyer, as a lawyer, you should know better. Don't call somebody an anti-Semite. It's a very dangerous word. I'm no, not. No, it isn't. It's it not libel per se. In the I'm not anti-Semite. Now, you are, you are I'm saying that the question. Jews, what, you're saying the Jews... Jews are responsible right. for the death of Just Jesus a moment. Christ. Just a moment now. Ooh. Just a moment. Just a moment. Let's even make it easier so we won't have that problem. 
the you Jews. better back out of it. I won't back out of anything. Well, that's what you're doing when you're saying let's make it easier. And shall I make it? We don't shall have I make it? Problem. Let's I'm, make it difficult and right. take your statement that Jews were responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. They and were. Stand there. They were, and I stand there, along yeah. with the New Testament. Now, back to this text, an important point. You maintain there is no evidence. None whatsoever. Fine. Uh, are you familiar with the Talmud? Uh, more or less. Make your point. Are you are familiar with it? Make your point. Uh, you just say yes or no. I said more or less. Do you know whether the Talmud is uh, dates back uh, before the Christian era? Right at this particular moment, I do not know whether or not the, the uh, Talmud that is extant now had. A, it seems to me what is it, twelve hundred or something? Uh, that it first was written very late, no. very late. The Talmud, very late. The Talmud, which any good rabbi, orthodox or otherwise, can tell you, and we have it on tape here. And one night when I was on, the Talmud contains a second-century reference. A second. I'm saying that the Talmud, as it is now, May was finish? authenticated in all of its documents, etc., about 1200 or something. The second century Talmudic document. You're still nowhere near Jesus Christ. You're 200 well, wait. years away from him. Let him make his point, Madeline. Maintains that Jesus of Nazareth was the illegitimate child of Miriam, a Jewish girl, Mary, and a Roman soldier named Pandera. And that he. Oh, I yeah. Ah, yes, I thought you remember that. Now. It would well, seem very. I, oh, don't dismiss it. I it would seem very. Oh, why would you dismiss it? It would seem very strange for the Jewish people, who through the centuries have been blamed as a people for the crucifixion of Christ, to have made reference to a man who never historically existed. Don't you think so, Mrs. Murray? No. Uh, now, can I answer you, the question? No, no, no. I, I'm going to answer it in this wise. Uh, I want to. We hear have this. we have a man uh, who is able to create uh, beautiful characters. Uh, Charles Dickens. He's able to create these in, in, in complete form, depth, everything else. And just because he's able to create this, this does not mean that Fagin existed. And whether or not in the, uh, remember, just, I want, to, I want you to take, remember two or three things. The world has been largely illiterate. Uh, until just what? Since the uh, late point. 1800s. Would you just, just your point? So that you have uh, Jewish historians with an axe to grind, or you have Christian historians with an axe to grind. Jewish historians with, with an, an axe, axe to, to grind, grind concerning, wait a minute, concerning yeah, Jesus of Nazareth? This Boy, you're pretty far off. Uh, please, here we have, no, we have a beginning religion, and this beginning religion is predicated on the fact that uh, a, a Jew has deserted uh, his um, uh, uh, synagogic kind of faith and has tried to uh, liberalize it. And that he has what? I'm talking about Jesus Christ trying to liberalize that particular element in which he How has... How can he liberalize that? I'm talking about the story with, which was written. So that you have this um, uh, uh, schemata of ideas that is slowly coming to the foreground in, say, the year 200 or 300 or what have you. 200 or far. And what will happen then if the Jews decide that they want some sort of defense against this story? Just deny that it ever existed. Uh, they could do that, but their the mind is peculiar, and some Jews may decide, ah, we won't do that. We'll cast aspersions on his birth, and we'll say that he was really born to Miriam, that he was illegitimate, and we know his father. Well, some wait people a minute, can say that. Other people can say wait other things. Minute, wait a minute. Come so on, you have on. a different oh, kind. These on. people, number one, come they on. were illiterate. They knew nothing about history, archaeology. They knew nothing about science. They knew nothing about culture. They knew nothing really even about religion or the no, religious origins. They knew nothing ignorant, about this. Everybody's ignorant. Put you on these things. I am. You know that these people at this I time know were the basically source. ignorant. I know basically. nothing of the sort. Josephus was one of the best historians of the time, and he, he was wrote, not. And, and, and he wrote shot through and, all kinds. Wait a moment. Of, uh, he wrote a very fine. He wrote a very fine history, although it's not accurate in every area. It's a very oh, thick and detailed history. history. Well, I well, right now, be either yes, if, you, everything. if you will, please. But he's still a good historian. Uh, I was I'm hoping. Sure that. I was hoping that uh, Rabbi Aaron Pearl. Uh, would call us uh, on the phone, and if he does, I would like to get a call through from him. I wonder if I might ask you, I would appreciate it, uh, Mrs. Burr, if you don't interrupt, because I want to hear this myself again. 
Oh, sure, Monsieur. I'm waiting. Oh, it's okay. Okay. If you move up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. What I'd like to have you tell me again, what was your statement? Because I don't want to misquote you, and I may do this if I attempt to paraphrase. What was your statement about the Jews in relationship to killing Jesus Christ? I simply said that some Jews at the time of Pontius Pilate were directly responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. And I specifically... Are you aware of the fact that uh, the Pope has said that this is untrue? No, he no. has he's not what said that. He, he has said, uh, if I read his statement correctly, that all Jews are not to be held responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus merely because they are Jews. But uh, the Roman Catholic Church has never retreated from the position that there was initial guilt on the part of those who crucified Christ, both Jews and Romans. Well, then I imagine that if you were to believe in uh, uh, Edgar Cayce, the late Edgar Cayce, and I don't have the quote in front of me here, I have it right downstairs in uh, Gina Simonera's book, where she claimed that, uh, or rather he claimed, that he could understand why the six million Jews were tortured and put to death in the manner in which they were. And this was because of atrocities they had committed in other incarnations, which I think is pretty ridiculous. And I cut up a woman pretty badly on the show when she made that statement. I would agree with you. I yes. wouldn't accept that. But, but you do feel, well, because you don't believe in reincarnation. No. Oh, but, but you do feel that the Jews were responsible for the death of Jesus Christ, regardless of who, whether, whether it's the Madeline Murray's interpretation of Jesus Christ or yours. In other words, the man Jesus Christ was killed by someone. He was, he was, betrayed, he was betrayed into the hands of the Romans by uh, his own people, uh, the, Jews, so the Jews, Jewish leaders at that time, and probably a good segment of the populace. Mm -hmm. I believe well, this, is, this is the New now, record I, I hope uh, historically. Howard... All right, can you, can you put me through on a line that I can get this through? Now, a gentleman that I have great respect for... And before you get on to the gentleman for whom you have great respect, may I make one other statement? Surely, you're right ahead. Uh, the uh, Pope, in making this statement about the Jews, absolving them, uh, on another program which I appeared here, I specifically stated that I did not believe that the local Jewish grocer or whoever he... No, I know that. I ...was know responsible that. for the crucifixion I'm not, I'm not attempting to... Say that this is your uh, your view, Walter. I put it in his. However, concept. yes. However, the uh, gentleman that I'm going to get on the phone now is an Orthodox rabbi. In fact, he is president of the Orthodox Rabbinical Association in New York. His name is Rabbi David Hollander. He's a man who I have great respect for, although we certainly are at odds in many religious discussions. But I think that he could be considered and, and recognized by anyone that he is an authority on Judaism and certainly an authority on the history of the Jews. And uh, as soon as Howard gives me the cue, I'm going to ask him if uh, he will cooperate by talking. Now, we can't over-talk him because he's coming through on a phone. And I just want to hear his views on the statement made by the Reverend Walter Martin. Uh... I think you. I, I don't need to worry about. It. Oh, it's on this one here. Yeah. Okay. Is the on, do I have to press any of these others? No, just, press just press this one here. All right. Uh, Rabbi Hollander. Yes, sir. Uh, it's nice to talk to you, sir. Could you pardon me a moment? Could you turn that down to just about three, the position three? Uh, have you been listening for a, a brief period of time? I can feel like a few minutes yet. I see. Uh, would you care to comment on the statement just made by the Reverend Walter Martin? Well, I tell you, uh, the only comment is that uh, we uh, reject completely uh, any uh, guilt or charge or indictment uh, of the Jewish people of then or the present time in connection with his belief in the, in the uh, killing to which he referred. Mm-hmm. Right. Could I ask him to... Yes, uh, oh, Mrs. Murray, yes, I'm going to give you an opportunity too, Walter. Mrs. Murray wants to speak with you, uh, Rabbi Hollander. All right. Could you please tell us, uh, Josephus was the historian for the Jews uh, during that time uh, when he could have reported on 
uh, Jesus Christ. And we have been discussing, discussing tonight, discussing, how do you like that? Discussing tonight uh, whether or not the uh, reference to Jesus Christ in the uh, writings of Josephus was uh, what is called an interpolation that is put there uh, uh, at a later time. Uh, I'm not giving this definition to you, Rabbi, but rather for the message of those people who are listening in who may not know what an interpolation is. I don't quite understand your question. What, uh, you do, uh, what is your question to My me? question to you is, as a um, leading uh, exponent of the Jewish uh, religion, and certainly knowing Josephus, would you or would you not say that this was an interpolation? Uh, Reverend Martin says that this is part of the original writing of Josephus. Oh, Reverend Martin said that in the earliest copies of the Josephus manuscripts, and I document this on a previous program, the earliest copies of the Josephus manuscripts contain the reference to Jesus of Nazareth. Therefore, by the argument of textual criticism from the primacy of the documents, since there is nothing which omits it earlier than that, it is therefore accepted as being in the document until you produce documents earlier which do not have it. This is what I say. Can you hear it, Rabbi? Well, this is the latter part I didn't hear very well, but uh, I understand what the discussion is about uh, as to the uh, nature of the, uh, the text there uh, in Josephus. Is that the discussion? Yes. Yes, it is, sir. And whether or not this is a valid interpretation, uh, which uh, was most probably in the um, uh, original and unproduced uh, volumes of Josephus. Well, uh, I, uh, I don't have any particular opinion on this question of the, of the, the writings of Josephus. The question addressed to me was, uh, what is uh, not my personal opinion, I'm sure, but the opinion of the, of the, of, uh, the Jewish people, say, say the religious Jew, uh, regarding the uh, statement made previously by the Reverend. And, and that question I answered about uh, the... Uh, authenticity of the of the book or the, or the passage in Josephus uh, about this uh, I have no personal knowledge I'm not a, a, a student of, uh, of history to be able to tell you uh, from the standpoint of the book itself or the passage uh, whether it's reliable or not but it uh, but the point is that we reject completely any kind of uh, connection uh, with the uh, uh, Ex uh, alleged execution uh, of uh, the one to whom Beatrice was made earlier in the, in the broadcast. Can I address a question to him? Yes. Um, Rabbi Hollander, this is uh, Reverend Martin. Yes, sir. Uh, I sir? Um, simply would like to ask a question uh, without getting into the problem of deicide. Uh, simply this one important question uh, relative to uh, the historicity of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, is it not true that Judaism, from the very beginning of the Christian era up till the present day, has always acknowledged the historicity of the person, Jesus of Nazareth? What do you mean by acknowledge the historicity? I don't, I don't get that. Good well, that you just... Before. Okay, I'll put it... That. I'll, what, what do you mean acknowledged what historicity? All right. You denied categorically any complicity of the Jews living at that time in the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Therefore, that is I'm correct. Fine, then I am therefore asking you, is it not true that this has been the historic position of Judaism? What has been the historic position? The position that you deny any complicity in his death at that time. That, that, that's exactly what I said. That's precisely my point. In other words, from the very beginning you're of... You're asking no, he's proof that, that, that there was Jesus Christ. Christ. Wait just a moment. Sure. I am proving sure. something. <laughs> I'm proving a very important point, if you can listen to it for a second. Namely, that Rabbi Hollander has just said that historically, from the earliest days, you. from the earliest days, <laughs> the Jewish position has been they have never believed that they were responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Fine. Well, you could hardly believe that from the earliest days if Jesus of Nazareth didn't exist. Uh, yeah, uh, just a moment. Uh, you see, this is a very uh, a total way of trying to get someone to say something indirectly. When I when I say you that said, I reject I just... any complicity. I don't have to, by making that statement, imply that other things that you believe are so. I, I was asked the question, whether we, what is our reaction to your statement? And I said, we reject it. Now, I don't have to go into 
You can uh, be rejected because we believe. Rabbi, you can't reject a statement without a historical basis for a rejection. Well, I, I say I, I can reject the statement, but you are not trying to deduce from that rejection that I have conceded or have commented on his existence or non-existence. Well, how in the world could you possibly make a statement? Because I heard, because on the 15th of May, I heard a Reverend Sohn so make a statement, and I am rejecting that statement. But you cannot read into that rejection what you want to read. I'm asking you a simple question. Has it not been... <laughs> historically, the position of the Jewish clergy since the earliest days of the Christian era that you are not responsible. <laughs> Hasn't that been your position always? Exactly. Because well, because how could you... We want, because we are point. not responsible now. How, well, but Rabbi, listen... Whether we are not responsible because we didn't do it as we did it, or because no one did it. Why would you bother to deny... <laughs> to the man, I heard him. Why would you bother to deny, historically, I'll that you were why. guilty of I'll something if nothing ever happened? We bothered to deny very much because we were made to suffer intensely. So we, uh, uh, it, it, was, it was untrue, but if it was just untrue and it didn't affect our lives, we wouldn't bother to, to deny it. There are many things that are untrue. We don't go around denying things that are untrue. But in this particular untruth was extremely painful by the, by the kind and generous and pious believers who took it out on, on innocent Jewish people. Rabbi. He denied it, 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 it was untrue, but he, he also denied it because the untruth in this case Rab was being used against us. Rabbi, can I ask you a question uh, about historic Judaism? Are you talking to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's talking to you, Rabbi Hollander. Rabbi Hollander, let me ask you this question. Uh, the Talmud, which you have, you believe to be uh, a commentary, uh, I believe, divinely inspired, or at least gutted by God, upon the uh, writings of the Old Testament. Yes, of course. And uh, the Talmud has been passed down through the Jewish people for many, many centuries. Is it not true that in the earliest copies of the Talmud, as far back as you can go, reference is made to Jesus of Nazareth as an illegitimate child, and that this statement does appear in the Talmuds? If you will read that text for me, so I'll comment upon it. You know it as well as no, I do. you're just paraphrasing something. No, you know the text and as well as I, I do. I will not comment on your rendering of a statement unless you will be able to read for me precisely the statement to which you refer. The statement to which I refer names... Jesus Ben Pandera. If, if you will kindly... Well, I haven't got a copy of the Talmud in my pocket, but the statement is there. I don't know. I don't think that you have it in your pocket. It's quite obvious. You don't have to be facetious about it. I merely said that if you want me to comment on something, I have to be more clear on what you're referring to. Now, you're saying, you're saying a few things at the same time of what the Talmud says in, the, in its earlier editions. So I'm saying to you, if you want me to comment upon it, I will have to be, you have to be much more accurate than you are now. But do you consider the Talmud to be an accurate historical document? I do. And you do maintain that the Talmud is of quite ancient vintage? Go on. And you do maintain that the copies of the Talmud which you have go back beyond the Middle Ages? Go on, go on. In its existing form. This is In its what existing we're talking form. about. Correct. But no, no, you're trying... Now, listen to the man. He's telling you. Mrs. No, Gray. he's not telling me, because what you said was that the Jews have exactly the Talmud that they have now. Are you implied this? Said this and that they had this since before Jesus no, Christ wait, was wait born. Minute, wait a minute. This wait was the minute. implication of your statement. Jewish commentary. And the Jewish Talmud has not been around that long in the present condition in which it is now. Would you care to comment, Rabbi Hollander? I, I, I care to comment only this, that many... Uh, non-Jewish uh, uh, governmental authorities and censors and church authorities uh, have sought uh, to put things uh, into the Talmud or take out of it in order to uh, bring some guilt upon the Jewish people. And this is why I said that before I will comment on anything that you say is in the Talmud, WNBC, I have to be sure that you are quoting an authentic uh, quotation therefrom, and not something that someone might have injected into a particular edition in order to find guilt among, against the Jewish people from their own alleged sources. Rabbi, and you... this is true, and you know the Christians have constantly inserted into historical records, Jewish and otherwise, what they wanted to insert in order to prove their point. Well, you, have, uh, you have been guilty of this since the very dawn of, um, of Christian era, um, inserting and editing and adding to, subtracting um, from... 
Mrs. Murray, uh, You're very I'm, I'm talking... Uh, no, don't get personal. You, I never do. I anything. use the generic you, please. But I, I don't Thank understand. You. I'm glad you because know, I don't want to... You're representing a certain school yeah, of I thought. Understand. You know yes. that. I just want to bring this point out uh, where Rabbi Hollander is concerned. And that is that the Jewish Talmud, he maintains, is a historically accurate document. It is very ancient, and it establishes according to many good rabbinical scholars whom we have in our files at Christian Research Institute and have written extensively on the subject, the historicity of the man Jesus of Nazareth. Now, in addition to the Talmud, which is the source for this, there are also the second and third century arguments of the church fathers against the people who were trying to say that Jesus was not the Christ. They would hardly be arguing the point as unbelievers that close to the sources if the man never existed. This isn't true because you're giving them uh, the kind of sophistication that you have now and the background and the historical references. And, and you want us to think they're all idiots. They were, for the most part, I think, idiots. Yeah. Reverend Hollander, uh, Rabbi Hollander, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Our number is Plaza 7, ADL 7, 8866. We're going to take one or two calls at this moment. You may talk. Now, what I suggest for you to do is this. You must follow the ground rules. They're simple. Just as soon as you uh, know that we're talking to you on the phone, turn your radio down. I do not want to discuss any other shows. I don't want you to tell me you listen to me every night, you belong to the Society of Eight, anything like that, because that's just a waste of valuable time. Say hello, we establish the fact that we're here, and we go. Now, you can talk to Madeline Murray, or you can talk to the Reverend Walter Martin. Prepare your question in advance. Bear in mind that both sides of the conversation will be heard by all of our listeners. Don't try to ask a complicated question, a two- or three-part question, because it's time-wasting. And, and I will be the one to make the decision. Now, I don't want to press the cut-off button. But if you don't go along with the ground rules, I'm going to be forced to take you off the air. We'll take a call over here, Plaza 78866. Good morning. Good morning, Long John. Yes. Oh, I just wanted to ask the rabbi a question. Of the rabbi is not here. He was on the phone back at the temple. Oh, I... I'm sorry. We called him. Oh, I... And he is not here. Oh. So, but he will be on in a week or so, and then you can talk to him. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hello, John. Yes. I'd just like to know, we, I've been listening for almost two hours now. Good. And not one point has been established. Now... You start off the show by asking the Reverend uh, what his proof is for the existence of God. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And we've been wandering and meandering down strange pathways, and uh, he hasn't gotten to that point. All right. You want him to answer that question now? To that point for the rest of the discussion. All right, fine. Now, you stay on a moment. Okay. Could you answer that? Yes. I think uh, you'll have to change it from the grace of Jesus. <laughs> no, that was another question. And I was sidetracked from it. You asked me a question, I answered it. I'll answer it now. Please do. There are numerous proofs for the existence of God, and uh, I feel that one of the greatest of all proofs is uh, existence itself. Uh, I believe that we live in a universe which can be observed and which can be measured and about which we know, or can know, a great deal. Not as much as we think we know, but we know a great deal. Now, there are only four possibilities for the existence of the universe in which we live. Either the universe is spontaneously generated and emerges from nothing, which is uh, completely rejected by physics and by every law that we've ever been able to observe. From nothing, nothing comes. Secondly, the universe is illusory. We think it's there, and it really isn't. But this is rejected by scientists simply because we can predict the movement of heavenly bodies, and you can't predict the movement of illusions. Or the universe was eternal. It always was here. Now, if the universe always was here, I'm using Einstein now because this is one of the points that he and other scientists have brought out and confirmed, and others, many more on the subject. If the universe is eternal, then it would have the same energy that it had at its uh, initial uh, eternal existence. 
and we would not find a dissipation of energy. But we do find a dissipation of energy, and the second law of thermodynamics tells us that we are losing energy. We are losing energy in the form of heat, and this heat ends in cold, maximum entropy. Therefore, the universe is not eternal. It is cooling off, and it was greater in energy at its creation than it is at this present moment. I want to say one thing. Well, do you let me finish? You are not finished? I'm, no, I'm not. Four points. Four points, the guy asked. Or, finally, the universe was created by a force infinitely greater than itself. And as far as Christians are concerned, this is the God of the Bible. And the revelation of Scripture is that he created the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. I know who this young man is who called because I, I recognize his voice. I don't know him personally. Well, this is a young man that's a college graduate. I am not, I don't understand it, but I'm sure he does. Do you understand him? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's fascinating, no, Madeline no, wants to This man's on the phone talking to me, isn't he? He asked me a question. No, wait, didn't he ask me a question? No, wait, didn't he ask me a question? Yeah. All right, if you ask me the question, and he says he wants an answer, I gave four points. All right, fine. Each one of them I defined. He says he doesn't understand them. I would like to know what he doesn't understand. I'd like to hear Mrs. Murray's comment. Right, Mrs. Murray. One of the fascinating things that I have found out in debating religion that's particularly fundamentalist, such as... Um, uh, oh, dear, I've forgotten your name. I'm not a fundamentalist either. Forgot Reverend that Martin. No. Here. Oh, basically, you are. Is it they have come Minister up? and Director of the Christian Research Institute in Wayne, New Jersey, the Reverend Walter Martin. Uh, they have come up with an idea that has traditionally belonged to the materialists, and that is that the world exists. And from this, they tried to derive proof that um, uh, the world uh, uh, was brought into existence by God. And they always give these four uh, definitions of existence. And always the first one violates the last one. Because the first one says that from nothing, nothing comes. And the world could not have been uh, spontaneously generated. And then they go back and they say, however, God spontaneously generated the universe and he created it from nothing. Because he existed. Yes, who was his mother? Ah, now you're to the point that's interesting. Who was his mother right. and who gave him right. the energy? Right. Who gave him okay. all of the molecules, right. the, uh, the okay. protons, the electrons, right. the neutrons? Yes. Do you see? This is one of the simplest small nothing, questions to answer. Nothing comes. No, it's a very simple question. No, so he had to have some material in order to, to create this. And what you have to do is what we atheists have to do. You have to commit to, to actually admit your complete ignorance about... Uh, the universe, whether or not it has been existing or whether it was spontaneously generated or whether it wasn't, you have to say along with us that you don't know from nothing. Uh, well, no, wait a minute. Let's find out. I don't, I don't, your I don't answer is always I gone. Don't it. I don't have to say that I know nothing from nothing because, first of all, you will be the first to admit, I'm sure, that from nothing, nothing will come. Except, of course, in God's case. No, would you just answer that question? From nothing, no, nothing will do come. You know, do you I know the know. mother of God? He doesn't have a mother. The reason he doesn't have a mother simply is that, by definition, God is not an effect. God is cause. And from nothing, nothing comes. So there may be nothing. They're not contradicting. No Mr. cause. You are cause taking a good anything. course in logic because your logic is very deficient. Yeah, you boy, have first you got 1984 all, first, first of all, listen. You admit that from nothing, nothing comes. Correct. No, I don't admit anything. Good heavens, woman! You must admit that from nothing, nothing will come. But you, this is your statement. Will you admit it? I had no idea. Yes. Oh. Come on, this is absurd now. This is not absurd. In a world of science, we have you no idea. Science? We have no idea. You have no idea, no rabbi, no priest, or no minister. How about physics? Any, any physicist. Oh, they don't know anything either. They have no, they have theories. Uh, oh, but, uh, but they have no absolute proof as to where the universe came from or even our planetary right. system. We're not talking about that. They that, don't that, know. That we're talking, talking no, about sir. that. We're talking, we are talking about a statement from you nothing, You have no right comes. to say God did it. Wait a minute. What you have to say is perhaps by space exploration, perhaps by continuing study of physics, perhaps by continuing study of uh, uh, the uh, uh, particular elements that we have found so far, perhaps we can extend our knowledge so that we can make a calculated guess later. I but am, right now, no, you don't know. I am saying something. Quit saying that saying, you know. I am saying something. You know. I'm saying something. You're not saying anything. You're, you're just Mrs. Murray, out of Mrs. Murray, Mrs. Murray, it's very deep. From nothing, nothing yes. comes, but God created right. for us. Madeline, Madeline, please, let him make his point. Uh, Reverend, I don't think you can. I don't think, you know, you can make a point because I asked for a simple statement. Will you grant the fact that from nothing, nothing will come? I don't know. We're just, you're, just, you're just rehashing, rehashing this. 
We're taking some calls on Plaza 7, 8866, PL 7, 8866. Madeline Murray is with us, the American atheist who removed the Bible and the prayer from the public schools, and the Reverend Walter Martin, who's trying to put the Bible and the prayer back into the public schools. Oh, he is. Reverend Walter Martin is a Baptist minister, director of the Christian Research Institute in Wayne, New Jersey. My name, Long John Neville. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, turn your radio down, please. Is this Long John? Yes, sir. Long John, I have a slightly unusual request to make. Uh, I, don't, I would like to debate uh, the Reverend Martin for just a few minutes. The reason I say debate is I do want to ask him a couple of questions. All right, but, you know, we don't want to take too much time with oh, the individual caller. I really appreciate right, it. He's listening to you. All right. Question number one. Go ahead. Well, the first thing I'd like to say to Reverend Martin is isn't the fact that today's newspapers, today, May 15th, you'll find articles written by two different journalists, highly erudite and highly trained, that will report the facts differently and also come to different conclusions. So how can you say something in the third century that was mentioned proves that something existed in the, uh, in the year one? That's my first question. All right. The answer to that would be simply to take all the historical sources that you could get at that period of time and study those historical sources. You would study archaeological evidences, and you would study textual evidence for material which was then extant, which we have copies of now. Then from this material, you would be able to see whether or not the people at that time believed in specific things. Well, be able to spell well phraseology, ar architectural, archaeological, well, pardon me, archaeological, this would have nothing to do with the Talmud. The fact remains that the archaeological evidence would not prove the existence of a specific human being. I'm not, I'm not debating from archaeology, sir. When I, made, when, I, when I made reference to the Talmud, my reference is... now. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to point out something. All right. I when I spoke something out, too. Now go to the next one. Right. Well, wait a minute. Let, 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 I, 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 think, I think, sir, you're not giving uh, uh, Reverend Martin an opportunity to answer. Sorry, sir. When I, uh, when I mentioned the Talmud before, I simply pointed out that this came from a historic background of Judaism, which is extremely accurate historically, and which makes reference to the existence of Jesus of Nazareth. And no Jewish scholars in history of any repute or any background have ever denied the historicity of Christ, of our Lord. All right, not saying that your Lord, not the historicity of today's papers on May 15th are inaccurate, but I couldn't very well see how something in the third century is going to be accurate. Well, Sir, I think you've made a good point, and I know you have other questions, but we would be grossly unfair to other listeners. Well, this is a very important question. Now, I know it's important to you, but there, every listener well, knows that his question... I have not a concession line. I'm sorry, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. May I help you? Uh, Turn your radio down, please. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to direct my comments to Miss uh, Marilyn Murray. She's listening to you right now. Uh, Miss Murray, how can you say uh, that you don't believe in religion when your non-belief is a religion itself? Secondly, uh, you're... No, stop right there, please. Uh, no, stop right there. Religion has to do with a supreme being. Who says? A supplication who says this? people who practice What religion. authority? What people? If you don't know, then no, don't well, bother to ask. No, I'm accepting the fact. I just want to know the, the source. What am I supposed to do? Sit here and... Uh, well, the authority that says religion, religion means one authority? specific thing. Well... Go ahead, you have What's your next question? My Not question before. is, uh, you, I'm sure she's familiar with Aunt Rand's writing. Yes, she is. Uh, and she uh, maintains that everything is either abstract or absolute specific in this universe. Now, as a parallel and as an analogy, when a TV set is damaged, obviously no image, there is no emission from the set. In other words, the set is nat naturally not working. Right. However, since the brain exists and intelligence is an abstract expression of the brain, again in these two categories, when an individual dies, obviously the brain still exists. So it is not consistent to say that intelligence does not exist after a person dies. I am afraid that I would probably be with Mrs. Murray here. I don't think that follows logically at all. Well, I don't... Uh, no, well, I'm using it as a crude analogy. My point is, uh, I'm an electrical engineer. We don't see electricity. We only see the expression of electricity. Yes, I agree with this, but the point that, that uh, should be made is this, that uh, Mrs. Murray probably owns an automobile and drives one, and uh, she suddenly didn't walk out one morning and find the car parked there and say, oh, look, 
here's an automobile. It's always existed with 4,700 cars. No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm not making myself clear. My the the is. point that this man is There's making... There's reason to it. No, this man is making that uh, there are manifestations which cannot be measured this way, that how do we know what the... Uh, the uh, I don't think it'll prove the soul. And, no, well, my point is that since everything is either abstract or absolute specific, Wow. No, you're would, saying that Anne Rand says that. I you're not expect. saying this for the whole world. No, I'm a man. Everything, well, this is over, uh, simplifying, but obviously everything is abstract. May I ask you this question, sir? Are you a believer? I beg your pardon? Are you a believer? Of course. Of course I am. Well, science proves that there is an intelligence. I don't no, it doesn't, sir. The universe with the I'm point. surprised that you would say that. Well, the universe, man, with your training, could not say that science proves it. But he it. said something else, John. Well, that this continuum could prove it to us. No, it is, it is improving it, sir, but however, I can understand your belief in it. No, I'm just saying, I, I don't even like the word God, because it's, it's the original, it was derived from the word good. What is it? We were so brainwashed with the child. Well, I, I, you've got me beat on that, but do you agree with that? Derived he's, talking the about, good? he's talking about the Anglo-Saxon usage of the term good, which came from the Nordic and then came down to us as God. This part is true, but the actual usage of the term itself goes back into antiquity, and particularly in Judaism, uh, to uh, a specific name, Elohim or Adonai, Lord, or something like this, and good or God. Well, uh, Yehovah, or Yahweh, or Yiveh, any one of the ones, that, the combinations that you want to use. The fact still remains that he's, he's accurate etymologically from the Anglo-Saxon. Thank you, sir. You right, know, well, you. Uh, one of the things that has surprised me constantly is that those uh, scientists who are in a narrow spectrum of uh, science, such as uh, electrical engineers, etc., uh, where they, have, they deal with rigid uh, rules, uh, are quite frequently very religious because they can make the transfer from the belief in the rigid scientific rules to the belief in the re religious uh, authoritarian ideas. Uh, and quite frequently we find that these persons with uh, a, a narrow education are very, very religious. We have another call on here. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to direct my remarks to uh, the Reverend Martin. And he's listening to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, when he was speaking to the rabbi before on the phone, somehow I got the impression he was trying to catch the rabbi in saying that because we say we did not, we being the Jewish people, we did not kill Christ, that means that we are recognizing the fact that Christ did exist, therefore we say we did not kill him. But what I wanted to tell him is when I was a young girl and I lived in a Jewish neighborhood, they had many, many uh, Christian people there. And somehow these Christian children were taught that the Jewish children had killed Christ. That we were constantly being beat up because we killed Christ. And we constantly would tell them we didn't kill him. Now what we were trying to say to them is we didn't even know who Christ was, at least I didn't until I was maybe 12 years old. But yet I constantly had to say that I didn't kill him. But this didn't mean that I believed that he was a excuse me, that, I, that he was a person who existed. And I thought perhaps if he spoke to somebody like myself, who was not a theologian, you know, theologian, yes. I'm so nervous. Don't be nervous, my dear. But somebody who's just an average person, and somebody who had to live through years in Brooklyn, being constantly beat up, never mind the people in Europe. Or I lived in Brooklyn, too. I think you helped her up, huh? You weren't Jewish. No, I didn't beat her up. I wasn't even a Christian then. No, but you know what you said before, and I tell you something. I usually go to bed early, but I happen to wake up and hear this, and I've been furious ever since. <laughs> all these people. See what you've been missing for years? That's, no, I listen to you earlier, sir, and I've been listening to you for years. But what I wanted to say is all these children who today are taught that the Jews didn't kill Christ, now, you've just taught all these children all over again to beat up all my children and my nephews who are now, in this day and age, 1968, still getting beaten up because they killed Christ. Can I answer your question, Miss? Yes. Can I answer your question? Yes. I didn't teach them anything of the sort, and the tape will bear it out. I said some Jews at the time of Pontius Pilate <laughs> were responsible for delivering <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth to death. That's may what I, I said. May I say this to you, Walter, though? Uh... I think it is wrong if, to say some Jews. I think it is better, if, if this is true, if history is true, and I don't know. I think it's better to say that some guys, some men, delivered Christ, not Jews. You see, right away, when you tie it up with an ethnic group, 
you are actually condemning these people as a group that rather than logical individual. To follow it all. Well, it may not be logical to you, but it's very, very logical to me because this is what causes anti-Semitism. This is what causes hatred by identifying members of a group. It's the same thing as some man uh, rapes a girl on the street. And in the papers reported a Negro raped a girl on the street. Right away, Negroes rape women. It has nothing to do with that. Men rape women. It has nothing to do with Jews, Catholics, Negroes, or any other John, group. John, let me ask you a question. I didn't give you a question, sir. But it's you, a statement. Okay, I'll answer You're it. not listening to the punctuation. How can you answer a statement? I'll answer it. How can you? It isn't a question. I won't have a chance if, I, if you won't let me speak. The New Testament teaches the responsibility of the Jews at that time who delivered Jesus of Nazareth to crucifixion. What a I document. accept this as historic truth. I am not accusing the Jew today of this. I am simply, I, in fact, I'll go further than that. The Jew and the Gentile today who rejects him as Savior crucifies him again. I believe this. Let me ask. Woo! That's my life. That is pretty rough stuff, Walter. Go ahead, young lady. Well, first of all, I'm really sorry he didn't live in my neighborhood, which was a middle-income neighborhood, and didn't have the beatings that I had. And I hope if he has children, he's going to teach them to be a heck of a lot more lenient to little Jewish kids than he seems to be towards Jews in general. Thank you, I, uh, I would like to uh, make one statement right here. Right. I have many friends who are Jewish, oh, come and come I am on. not anti-Semitic. Right. 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 I am not yeah, anti-Semitic. Some of my best I, I resent the <laughs> idea that Mrs. Murray Murray makes a statement that I'm anti-Semitic. No. Some Jew no, no, picks it up on the, uh, in Brooklyn and says, he's teaching children to beat my kids up. I reject no, but you wait, wait a minute, but your last statement, Walter. I reject it. No, wait, but your... Well, you did, well, well, reject the last statement. Then you'll be we better off. I will not approve. In other words, if a Jew has not seen the value of Christianity, then there is something wrong with it. If the Jew yes. or the Gentile does not receive God's Son as their Savior, the Scripture says they lost. Christ. Yes. They're lost. Thank you, young lady. Came into the world. Good night. Good morning. Um, John? Yes. I don't have 400 years of stuff, but by golly, I'd like to get my opinion in on here. Well, go ahead. Um, You're a real listener. <laughs> yes, I am. I know that line. Go ahead. I'd like to say to the Reverend Martin. Yes. Why does he let this woman laugh at him? How does she know so much? Who is she? I'll answer the question by simply saying that I'm willing to conduct a discussion with Mrs. Murray on any specific points, and I'm delighted for specific points, but Mrs. Murray has her own vocabulary. Right. She has a whole series of cliches that she right. uses, and Mrs. Murray will not even admit to the basic logical proposition of an if. If you say right. to Mrs. Murray, for instance, uh, if God exists, Mrs. Murray will then say to you, no. I won't even grant that there's a possibility of God's existence. Now, a person who begins... She's atheistic. She's not... No, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. John. A person who is seeking to further, as she says in the aims of her society, freedom of thought, right. can hardly be furthering freedom of thought by closing their mind to any evidence. Right. And she does that. Just like not, that. Not only that, but the way she laughed at that gentleman on Ellen Burke's show was to... Terrible, and she's doing that to you too. Well, Don't let her do it. I find religious people to be pretty funny. You do? Well, yes, I, I do. I find you to be a heck of a lot funnier, and I don't, I'm not spelling it the right way. Well, I'll tell you. Only uh, because I have respect for Long John Neville, not for you, lady. Well, look, uh, I think something is very important here, and I want to say this, so I'm on record once and for all. I have great respect for Mrs. Murray in her convictions. She's an honest... But agent. not the way she... Now, let me finish what I want to say now. Let me finish here. All I right. have respect for Mrs. Murray because she's an honest atheist. She comes out and says what she believes, and she doesn't care what people do to her because of her convictions. There's a lot of atheists in schools, there's a lot of atheists in higher education, atheists in government, atheists in politics, who believe exactly as Mrs. Murray believes, but they don't have the courage of their convictions. Mrs. Right. Murray at least has that. What I object to in Mrs. Murray is not having the courage of her convictions and not being dedicated and not feeling that she's right or anything like this. What I object to in Mrs. Murray is that she won't give other people the 
honesty that she wants other people to afford her. If she's such I an honest patient, then why did she have her children baptized? I don't, well, she gave a reason for that. No, she gave a very good reason, 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 my dear. One that many of us do things to bring a little <clears throat> bit of happiness to our parents. You know, the majority, I, I, let me strike that word majority. Many young people who get married would rather go downtown to City Hall and get the whole thing over with, but they go along to make their parents happy to have a big religious wedding. And I think it's nice if parents have been good to you throughout your life, you might try to make them happy too. And it really isn't that much of a chore to have a regular formal religious wedding. So I think I admire Mrs. Murray for this attitude that she did something because she wanted to be able to uh, enjoy the, the, the company of her parents and to have her parents enjoy the opportunity of being with their grandchildren. And this is the only way that this could work out. But you mustn't forget that she did nothing to have Mr. Murray give up the Catholic Church, his own religion. She did nothing to discourage her parents. But as a human being, she has lived her own life with her own principles and her own views, and I admire her for it. I don't think anybody can criticize her for it. Oh, no, I would like to add something there. If my parents had said to me when my uh, children were 13, 12 or 13, now, Madeline, we expect you to take your children and have them confirmed in the Presbyterian Church, I would have said no. Uh, this is a decision up to that child. It's not up to me and it's not up to you. And they would have had trouble with me right then and there. Now, if that child had said yes, would you have gone along with him? I'll tell you what I always say about this, and in a way it's a gag, in a way it isn't a gag. If my son, who is 22 years old now, would write to me a letter and say, Mother, I have just been ordained into the Catholic Church, and I'm going to be a priest, I would feel all right with this business. I'll go ahead and let him do it. I'll WNBC, do it. you uh, But uh, he can do it. I don't know, honey. Thank you. Hi, Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Bye-bye. At least you progressed to honey. Oh. Hi there. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, hello. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. Let's roll. Come on. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. No. No, I'm a first. I'm an atheist and a pessimist in that order. But now I have a question for Mrs. Murray. <laughs> There's no atheist that's a pessimist, believe me. No. Uh, what's your question, honey? Oh, Come on. Someone in the back. Oh, all right. Um, Mrs. Murray, do you think... Do you see any remote possibility as you've traveled around in lectures and so on of atheism, belief in man and life on earth, ever replacing religion, belief in God, and life after death as preempting life on earth? I mean, do you see any hope? <laughs> I tell you, actually, I tell you. actually there, are, there are two phenomena going on in America at the same time one is that there is a rapid falling away mm -hmm. from orthodox religion and a rapid liberalizing of religion uh, there's a movement I think of the Protestants toward uh, humanism and there's a movement of the Roman Catholics uh, toward uh, what they call ecumenism which is a um, a kind of acceptance of the old Protestant belief, so that there's this constant liberalization and falling away from the church. And this is brought about not so much by me, but by science, uh, by our ability now to uh, instantaneously convert um, uh, news items to everybody, etc. The amount of education that we have and um, the amount of, uh, well, space probes, all of this. Mm -hmm. It's causing it falling away from religion. But at the same time, in the other direction, we have a very frightening thing. Right. And that frightening thing is that religion is gaining tremendous political and economic power like exactly. never before in, in our life. And I am very, very worried about this. I think that ultimately there will be a non-religious humanistic world where people will be concerned with the world here and now oh. and forget this rubbish about a life hereafter. I Thank you very much for that. Oh, yeah, no, nope. sorry, you had it. Um, all right, good night. Bye-bye. I think uh, that uh, it's perfectly true that uh, organized religion is uh, becoming diluted. It is. I would agree with Mrs. Murray on this. But uh, I think Mrs. Murray will have to face up to the fact that uh, so far as the Bible is concerned, so far as Christianity itself is concerned, so far as the historic testimony of the church is concerned, we have not altered our position simply because liberalism has swept into the church. We still believe the historic gospel. We're taking calls on Plaza 7, 8866, PL 7, 8866. We'll take your call right now. Good morning. Are you there? Yes, hello. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Murray. 
Uh, turn your radio down, sir. She's listening to you. Mr. Murray? Yes. yes, I'm here. Uh, it seems interesting that uh, you seem to know things that, uh, that don't exist. You seem to know that the people in the first century were very illiterate. Uh, you seem to know that the life you're after is rubbish. You seem to know that people uh, who believe in God, that there's something wrong with their mental capacity. Not capacity, condition. Condition. Mental condition, yeah. Uh, Go ahead, I'm with you. Can I ask you one simple question? If, for example, you were shown proof uh, to the existence of God, would you believe it's in impossible. it? Impossible. So you have to stop right there. There's no. You know that uh, for the for about six thousand years there have been proofs of God presented by persons who believe in God, and uh, there are nine classic groups of proof. And if any one of those uh, classic groups of proof had been acceptable at any time in human history, uh, God would have been established, or he could have settled the argument tonight by just appearing someplace. Oh, yeah, but uh, he doesn't, you that's see. very facetious, you know. Now, I'm not being facetious. I'm very, very serious. Because if you had any concept whatsoever in religion, forget about the word organized religion, but what religion believes in, uh, then this is a question where it wouldn't be raised at all. If you would know what, what, what God means, uh, then the, this question would be raised why God. Now, what kind of God are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, Buddha, or are you talking about uh, uh, a Muslim God? Are you talking about a Chinese God? Are you talking about the Egyptian God Ra, or are you talking no, about no, the talking God about Yahweh? Are you what kind of God are you talking, talking about? about? You're talking God. about a very... You're talking specific. about a God uh, which is a supreme intelligence and a supreme power. Uh, which uh, has created the world and continues to sustain it. That's the type of God we're talking about. No, that's see, now you've put a, God, a lot of things together here. First you say that there's a supreme intelligence. Nobody knows whether this is true or not, and you can't even define what supreme intelligence is. You don't know whether the world was well, created or whether I cannot it was define what I disagree. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that I cannot define it? Yes, that's what she said, sir. Uh, supreme intelligence means the highest possible form of intelligence. Sir, that doesn't mean What's anything. That? That form mean of thing. knowledge. That is, that is a simple definition of supreme intelligence. Sir, yeah. does it, that, well, wait a moment. Uh, uh, Waller Martin wants to say something, sir. I, I just want to draw attention once again to Mrs. Murray's line of reasoning. She says, nobody knows whether God exists or not. Nobody can prove it. But Mrs. Murray knows. Because Mrs. Murray says, so I there is no God that I no you. logical arguments have been produced in over 6,000 years of your beating your head to try to get something to How would, to how would you, uh, know, Mrs. Murray, you don't listen? Mrs. Murray? You don't listen to any logical argument. You reject logic. This sir, we do have a number of other calls. Thank you for calling us. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I don't think it was Murray. I realize that, sir, but I mean, you'd like to be in them all night, and I don't blame you. I... Uh, I, I didn't get my point across. Well, sure. If you didn't get your point across in this amount of time, then I'm sorry, because there are many, many other people, and they might raise the point that you have in mind. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Good morning. Hello. Yes. A long time level. Yes, sir. This is he. Yeah, I'd like to make a couple of comments. All right, let's make it. Let's cut it down to one. Otherwise, a lot of people will never get on the air tonight. Very short comments. Um, the first one is that uh, concerning Rabbi Holland's statement. Um, the Reverend made a point of asking him about uh, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the, Jew the Jewish people do uh, relieve themselves of all guilt of killing Jesus Christ. However, what is the uh, Reverend was trying to pinpoint the rabbi into saying that Jesus Christ existed as the Messiah. No, the Jews no, no. No, don't, don't try to put words into Walter Martin, uh, Martin's mouth. That he did not try to say. Well, if he has existed as an historical figure, and then from this historical figure is derived the concept of Messiah. I wasn't saying that. According to your argument, it logically follows that. Good heavens, how we detest logic tonight. Well, uh, look, uh, all I said to the rabbi was that, uh, it was a very simple thing, all I wanted him to say was, historic Judaism has always denied guilt or complicity in the death of Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And, then you, and then you asked him whether, whether the Jewish people believed in whether Jesus Christ existed or not. I said, I asked him if, if it was not true that in history, the Jewish scholars always conceded the historical existence of Christ. Postulating they, the they may have, they have conceded, they existed, they believed that he existed, 
as a person, but not as a messiah. Thank you. That's what I wanted to prove. Thank it's you very much. much. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Can I make more comments? No, sir. I'm sorry. We have a lot of other calls. We would be unfair to the other listeners as well. I appreciate your interest. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. <clears throat> oh, I could almost believe in this whole thing, you know, by the time I got on. All right. I, I have a question for Madeline Murray. All right. What is it, please? Uh, I am an atheist. I have a daughter. Uh, she has gone to private school for eight years. I had no problem. Uh, they were very liberal in their views, and they didn't, you know, bother me about that. Now she is ready to go into a high school, another private. Now, see, I mean, she solved the beautiful thing in public schools. Now, with private things, uh, it's understandable that these people can determine what they want to do. And uh, they, I have the brochures, different brochures from different schools, and they say they're non-sectarian, but they do believe in the Christian um, thing and that the child should attend some church on Sundays. Now, what is your question then? My question is, uh, will I be, re will my child be rejected? If she doesn't attend any one of these churches that these schools are saying that the child should attend some church. I would say that she'd be frowned on. Yes, I think it's unfortunate. I don't know whether she would be rejected by the school as a student. No, no, not, no, no. no she means whether or not students. she's going to be rejected by the students. Of course. If you, are, well. if you are in a position, my son was not only rejected, he was beaten up all the time. Uh, and if you are in a minority viewpoint, such as the Jews, uh, here the Jews have been uh, hounded their children, and non-believers have been hounded all the time. We've been murdered by hundreds of thousands. Uh, or uh, I'm, I'm most points. concerned with my daughter having. Now it, it's it's not possible for me to have my child with me at home. But you cannot protect your child. As an atheist, one of the things that you should have done so far is to prepare her with enough kind of inner strength that she can face any kind of criticism that comes and let it roll off of her back. Yes. And this is the important thing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for calling us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, may I help you? Yes, is this uh, Long John? Yes? yes, this is he. All right, am I on now? You certainly are on. All right, I'd like to ask some questions. Let me turn you. Well, let's take one question, please. Well, uh, it's not about religion. It's about history, the history of Jesus. Did he have any, uh, did Mary and Joseph have any of the children besides uh, uh, Jesus? Uh, Reverend Martin, will you answer that question, please? According to the New Testament record, yes, they had other children. Uh, did did the, his brothers or sisters follow him in this new religion? One of his brothers did, James. Did he need uh -huh. to follow uh -huh. the new religion? There's a question about this. One of his brothers, James, did and wrote the epistle of James. Don't say this so positively. You're not sure. Nobody knows Mrs. Murray, that brother. Mrs. Murray, Mrs. Murray, would you Even kindly, would you kindly at least admit one thing? That you, you know make nothing about the Bible. You make very positive statements, I have to, uh, because uh, Reverend Martin. I have constantly. to. Well, I'm going to, because you make them. But these statements are just your opinion, and your opinion only. They are not based in historic facts. They're not based in... How do you know? Facts. How do you know? Based in anything. Wait, wait, How do you know? They, are they, are they, are they, that's what I was going to ask. They are. Are they in the Bible? And you are so ignorant of the Bible, it's pitiful. You will go around making it. Wait a minute. Your opinion, wait a minute. I have no opinion. I could give you a quiz right now for a, a first year Sunday school kid, and you couldn't pass it. You don't know beans about the Bible. You this sit here and pretend to be an authority on religion. Your religious background is virtually nil. Now, don't play now, something you, you're not. You finished, I'm not finished with this. When you talk law, you wait. Don't when know you know whether law, or not wait, these alleged wait, brothers and sisters when you, ever wrote this. When you day. talk law, Mrs. Murray. When you talk philosophy, when you talk your atheism, and you talk separation of church and state, that's your forte. You're welcome to it, and I'm for you as an American. When you get into the field, yeah, wait. Decent of you. Thanks. But when you get into religion, you are so ignorant, it's pitiful. You would lecture on... Oh, wait, because let me I don't accept your wait interpretation no, 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 no. of the Bible. You can have wait this wait knowledge. Uh, factually. Because wait a minute. You wait a minute. Factually. You factually. Else. factually, your knowledge of religion is ridiculous. I made a statement a moment ago. I said, very quietly, James, our Lord's oldest brother, believed in him. His oldest brother? Just brother. a moment. Just a moment. Pardon. His you mean brother, he's older than, no, than Jesus? No, wait a second. I James, thought you know that, that Jesus... Uh, James, the elder, he's called me. Let me finish. 
as he's called in the New Testament. Believe. Incidentally, were they immaculate conception? Would you let me finish? Would you let me finish? Or did Joseph have a part in that? Madam, do you permit courtesy? Thank you. You made a statement, a clear statement. You said, you know, nobody knows. It's not a mere matter of biblical fact. The tape will bear this out. Now, how would you know it's a matter Wait, of biblical fact? Are you fact? hung up on these tapes? It's not a matter of biblical fact. Your home and Wait a minute. All the time to hear your voice. Wait a minute. No, to hear yours. This is the point. You do not know whether the New Testament makes the statement or not. But you said, Number now listen, one, wait, there wait, is wait, no wait, such a thing wait, as four authentic wait, books of the New Testament. Wait, wait, Number wait. two, nobody knows who wrote them. Nobody knows when they were written. Nobody knows what they refer to. John is so wild, it's fantastic. Mrs., uh, nobody Mrs. knows Murray. when the Q's are Nobody, You don't know Mrs. a Murray. thing Mrs. about Murray. the Bible. Since you're such it's an expert. a conglomeration wait a of rubbish. Since you're such an expert. And you're an expert on rubbish. Just a moment, just a moment. Would you tell me what the Q source is? Who knows? You don't. Who knows what Kelly? You don't. Who knows? This? You don't know. I do. No, no, you do not. <laughs> you know a couple theories about it that have been advanced. You're not going to get off the hook on this. A certain religion. You, John, you're going to stick with this point if you're honest. No. She made a statement. It's not biblical. If it's in the Bible, it's no, biblical. If it's in the Bible, it is biblical. You may disagree with it. No, no, well, no, 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 no. You can disagree with it, but if it's in the Bible, it it's is. Biblical. We are right now. No, for instance, we are right now having a tremendous uh, argument with the, the with the uh, biblical scholars. As uh, well, uh, uh, for some people, the argument is settled whether or not Mary was a virgin, or whether this is to be transcribed as a no, girl who is a young girl. All right, no, 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 no. Changing the point. No, no, I am not changing sure the point. Sure, you are. The word Mary. The virgin, this is in the Bible, and this is biblical. Is it biblical that she is an actual physical virgin with a hymen which has not been ruptured, or is it but biblical that she is a young girl? What is it? And this is what I'm an talking answer? about. You don't know. Do you want an answer? No, no let's, I don't get, let's get an answer. You said is it? Any kind of answer. Let's let's the answer. answer. The biblical answer is that she was undefiled, which means that the hymen was intact and the Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit without human agency. That's the meaning of the word parthenos. In the New Testament, of course, oh, words well, don't how mean much to you. How come none of the New Testament scholars uh, that who are translating at this <laughs> time are interested in accepting your interpretation of the? You know word? why? I'll give you the answer. They admit the word Parthenos means that, but they say we don't accept the record just as you don't accept it. But they admit and all the of word means. People are wrong. The only person who is right is you. No, is very the only person who is right, the only person who is oh, right, brother. is the text. That's all. Let me. Uh, By the way, I just want you to you get that point. You don't even have any idea whether that sure. the text is corrupted or not. Well, I want you to realize corrupted. that you are ignorant of Scripture. This of uh, your Scripture and your interpretation. Virtually, I admit my ignorance. Madam, I thank God Madam, you are ignorant of all like Scripture. Let me assure you of that. Uh, Thank you, lady, for calling. Well, I didn't uh, get my clip. Well, I think you did. I mean, it's obvious that we can't trust it tonight. Thank you, though. Thank you. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Long John. Would you turn your radio down, please? Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask the uh, Reverend Martin. He's listening to you. Good. Uh, how he how he uh, correlates his statement that uh, he uh, well he admires the frankness of uh, Mrs. Murray in being an atheist, as he expounds it, with the statement that uh, he believes that the Gentiles and Jews today who have not taken Christ that the Savior are crucifying him today. How do I uh, same logic? How do I bring them together? <laughs> well, if Mrs. Murray will abstain from her usual wisecracks on the subject, I'll try and answer it. Simply this way: the New Testament record states that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world as the Son of God. The Jews rejected him as the Messiah, and Gentiles after that accepted him. Through the centuries, Jews and Gentiles have disagreed on this basic point, and Christians have received him as the Messiah. I simply maintain that in the Old Testament, God said the Jews were his chosen people, and that they were the channel of salvation to the Gentiles. I maintain that the New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament, and that through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, Christianity has become the channel of redemption to the whole world, including the Jew. And any Jew and any Gentile who rejects Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior after God's love to them shown on the cross is guilty of crucifying him afresh. That's what the New Testament says, and I believe it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, pardon me? Thank you very much for calling. And any other interpretation of the Bible? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Rick and Martin. 
What's that? For, for, no. yes, he's, he's listening to you, ma'am. Please make your point or ask your question. I'd like my point, and I wonder why Reverend Martin isn't emulating the very few words he just said about how uh, God uh, uh, sent his son to be the savior of the world and spread love in the world. Now, where is his love? May I ask you a question? When he refuses to hand over a few Jews, if it's only a few, as is said that we're a precious Jew, so that he may need it in the future, he refuses to let go that the few Jews uh, murdered Christ. Now, as far as the Christ being mentioned in the Talmud, I have heard from authoritative sources, although I'm not well versed in it myself, but I've heard discussions, that there was reference made in the very early Talmud to uh, Christ. That's correct. But because they denied his um, messianic uh, uh, state, they were persecuted, murdered, and oppressed. So that when they all got when the uh, elders got together, they decided that in order to save the, any Jews at all, they should remove everything in the Talmud or wherever else it may be that he ever existed. Now, this I have heard discussed. I um, can't say that I know it right on the court, but these are from learned people. I am. Um, now that <laughs> makes sense. I would have to. I would have to answer this question by saying that. Uh, I know of no Jewish sources that have made the statement that they altered the Talmud because of persecution. Well, this is, it has been... I think been, it would be unworthy of them to do so. I don't believe they would. Well, they have, it, well, removed it. This I have heard discussed, and there is no sign ever since then because of the persecution that they had enjoyed. Now, may I say that Mrs. Murray, who is the atheist, hurts perhaps only herself, even in your eyes. I don't say I'm not an atheist myself. Whereas you, with your feet, with your uh, um, constant repetition of the Jews being responsible for the death of Christ, I didn't say that, ma'am. Hurts many, many people. I didn't say that, ma'am. Oh, you said that there were the few Jews, always the few, but the fact is the Jews. As well, would, you, would it make, you, make it happier if I altered the record and said the Eskimos did it? No, I think it should oh, be see, there were men true. that did it if they did it. I, that, I said that too, Walter. I, I, I agree why, with this Why should lady. I depart from the record of history in order, order to accommodate you? Said, why don't you just say some guys did it? Some That's right. Why should I when the record I indicates... You, lady. Why should I do it when the record indicates otherwise? Well, you, you are when so you blinded the only to the record part. without using any judgment or kindness of your own with any ignorant person listening, listening right now, Walter, Jesus Christ would automatically say that the Jews killed Jesus. They'd have to be very ignorant. Hello. I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Murray, is it, is it necessary uh, when presenting what uh, may well be a just cause, like uh, requiring churches to pay a just uh, or a fair share of, of taxes to support the activities of the city, the uh, state, and country, is it necessary to attack religious belief itself? Well, you see, there are uh, groups in America who are interested in separation of church and state. One of them is Protestants, another are uh, Americans United. One of them is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, one of them is the uh, Baptist uh, Convention, certainly the Southern Baptist Convention, etc. So that there are a number of persons who take this position on separation of church and state stemming from a basic philosophy. Uh, my basic philosophy, and the reason that I'm interested in seeing this, is that I'm an atheist. And uh, being an atheist, uh, I can do nothing except criticize that position which has uh, uh, so excoriated mankind over um, the history of mankind. Uh, the, the religious ideas, uh, the intolerance of the religious ideas and the way that uh, atheists and uh, non-believers or heretics have been abused by those persons in command in relation to religion. I couldn't change my position if I tried. And uh, you can still be for separation of church and state, and you can be religious. Uh, just join one of those groups who are interested and involved with this. I'm, I'm only one small spokesman on the scene for this uh, particular thing. Yes, yes sir. sir. 
But you, you, you do speak, uh, one of your, your main points is, is taxation of church property, is it not? Is this is true, and I'm certain that uh, good Reverend Martin is tax-free over there for his uh, particular business that he's pushing in his church and everything else, and I think that he should be taxed as well as you and as well as I. What in the world does that have to do with, with whether or not there is a God? Can't you, when you're at least, maybe when you're talking about atheism, that's one thing, but when you're discussing the subject of taxation of church property, why? Why do you have to argue that there is no God? Sir, that was not our subject tonight. Oh, but she does this, uh, No, I don't. Let me tell you what I do, because I'm there and I know. When I'm asked well, I to a university... You, when I'm asked to a university or on a radio station, and I'm asked very specifically to say on separation of church and state or taxation, I do that. If I am asked to speak about atheism, I do that. Uh, now, sometimes I will get into a format where the uh, the interviewer on a, a talk program will feel that it will be more provocative uh, to be present to the public if uh, uh, there is a person here who will challenge me in the relation of religion. I could talk for hours on just taxation of church. I would never have to bring up religion. Well, I wish but I, I am in a format that is not determined by me on most of these, uh, in most of these... And, and on this program, sir, I was the one who started... I don't, were you with us at the top of the show? Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, at the top of the show, I did 30 minutes with uh, Madeline Murray asking her whether she was an atheist or whether she was an agnostic, and we got into a debate as far as the definition of the word agnostic. And, uh, frankly, I haven't even touched on... Uh, we the separation even of the church or state and taxes at all. About the only one came in, you came in with it just now, and so it's been discussed like for, you know, two minutes. All right. Thank you, sir, for calling. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Nice talking with you, sir. Let me get another one down. Yes, here we are. Hi there. May I help you? Long John? Yes. Oh, uh, I just two minutes ago, Reverend Mary was demonstrated. Reverend what? Uh, Reverend Martin. Reverend Martin, could you speak a little louder, sir? Uh, yes, just a few minutes ago, Reverend Martin demonstrated his use of logic. Yes. He said that, um, James was Christ's oldest brother. No, no. He did? Elder, said, James no, the Elder, I yeah. said. He's referred to in the New Testament as James the Elder. It was he, oh, was he younger than Christ? Oh, yes. Yes, no, this, this was brought out, sir. Maybe you missed the point. Uh, according to the Bible, according to Walter Martin's version of the Bible, it is James <laughs> the Elder. The text itself was taken I, I'm text. not debating it with you, Walter. So, so, you know, look, you you got to hang up. Uh, I'm going with you. All right, sir. Okay, well, let me Thank you. Right. Hello. Hello. I would like to uh, say to Miss Murray that uh, in the New Testament we are told that there would come a time when there would be scoffers. And she certainly is the biggest scoffer that I ever heard. And we are also told that uh, there would be an apostasy, which we're having now, and also that there would be false prophets. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Long Young? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to read just one uh, quotation from uh, one of Frank Edwards' books. You know, your friend? I yes. I knew him. Yes, very well. I, I can't remember which book I read it in. <laughs> well, then what are you going to read it from? I have the page right here. Oh, you kept that page? Yes. All right, go ahead, read it, ma'am. Uh, it says, it's a, he's quoting Werner von Braun. Yes. You know, it says, science has found that nothing can disappear without a trace. Nature does not know extinction. All nature knows is transformation. If God applies this fundamental rule to the most significant and minute parts of his universe, Surely it makes sense to assume that he applies it also to the masterpiece of his creation, the human soul. Everything that science has taught me and continues to teach me strengthens my belief that there is a spiritual existence after death. What is your point, ma'am? Well, my point is, I think, I'm not sure, but I'd like to ask Reverend Martin, I, I think uh, that even the other religions of the world they're, they they all have one basic similarity, and that is that they practice the golden rule, you know, do unto others. But well, what has this got to do with Warner von Braun? Well, I I, I mean, you you have you have quoted him as an authority. I'm assuming. Yes. In rocketry. In what? In rocketry? No. He, well, then that's the only thing I know that he enjoys he expertise in. in spiritual existence. Well, I don't, I don't really know of any particular academic training that uh, Professor Werner von Braun has in uh, theology. 
I may have missed something. That according to what he has heard and learned and seen about science, everything that he knows about science, well, now you see, but this led is him to believe that nothing disappears from this earth without a trace. Well, we're not even no. talking about something that has disappeared. I assure you that my well, Madeline well, Murray has not suggested I have, that... I have an infinite more respect for him than I do for Madeline Murray. Well, this what? may be your hang-up. What is it? It may be your hang-up. Oh, come on. Don't, don't call everything everybody's hang-up. Well, why shouldn't I? <laughs> In other words, the fact is that Werner Van Brown said something. Now, if he said something about rocketry and Madeline Murray disagreed with him, I'd have to say, Madeline, I think you're off your rocker. Because the man who knows more about rockets would be Rocket. 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 Stop <laughs> the rings around me and let me read it to you again. No, you've, no, you've read it once, ma'am. We you know, accept it. Do you want them comment? Yes, what she is demonstrating no, is that anybody uh, can Murray. pick up... You don't want to hear from her? Happens. Reverend Martin. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I've got uh, a statement for Madeline and a... Um, and a question for Dr. Martin. Well, take your choice. Which one do you want? Because we don't have that much time left. Oh, all right. Well, that, uh, the important thing is for Madeline Murray, as far as taking the, uh, the prayer in the Bible out of school. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, religion is like sex. It's here to stay. And if children can discuss all of their religions, each one taking a day, and uh, either a prayer or whatever, and, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, it's an event that each one got to understand and know better uh, each one's religion. There would be uh, a lot less confusion, a lot less... Well, why do it in the I public school? No, 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 she's right. She's in right. the public school? No. Uh, I have been advocating. I don't agree with that. Uh, no, I have been. I have been advocating uh, constantly across the nation that starting in the fifth grade of the public schools, there should be certain things introduced uh, uh, about religion. First, there should be a study of comparative religion because these kids in this grade is, uh, they are able to understand this. There should be comparative religion, um, a literature of religion. There should be every single one of the holy books should be introduced. Uh, certainly, there should be an examination of. Uh, uh, those dearly beloved parts of religion, the Inquisition, the Crusades, the religious wars, the uh, extermination of witches in the United States, all those very um, uh, beautiful crowns on the Christian uh, religion. Then also I think that there should be a study of psychopathology of religion or the psychology of religion and that all of this should be in the public school. Now what I object to in the public schools and I think that everybody uh, bears this out, even a great number of the religious groups, is that there should be no religious ceremony. And this is what the Supreme Court uh, ruled on, a religious ceremony in the public mm -hmm. schools, not a study of religion. I would like to see this, because I'm convinced that once the spotlight is turned on religion in all of the schools and throughout the land on radio and television, that there will be a mass exodus from Christ Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, would like to comment on Mrs. Murray's constant use of this old red herring, and I think it ought to be brought out in the open and discussed. She said it over in Paramus recently in New Jersey in a debate which was taped. Did you go there? I, they, we have a tape of it. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, did you have a good turnout? Uh, standing room only. So. Um, she has it's made a tremendous number of people came from hearing that on the show. Yeah, well, that's just we... Yes. Uh, uh, no. the, Mrs., Mrs. Murray appeared there and debated... Uh, the existence of God with uh, Dr. John Ludlam, uh, and um, we have the tip of it. Uh, she repeats this old red herring, and I think it's something that, well, that ought to be uh, brought out and exploded for what it is. You want to see this happen in the fifth grade and show these kids Torque Mata's Inquisition, and you want to show them the Crusades, and you I want to show the them... Torque Mata. Well, what is this? That's the pronunciation. Uh, and um, okay. you uh, go ahead and uh, want to show all of the failures and frailties of religion. Of which there are cruelties and the injustices and the human indignities. Mrs. Murray, would you, would you again be, give me the manners? I'd interrupt you, you let me finish. You want to do this. You want to show the kids these things. Sure. Okay, can I, can I, do, can I introduce something else, too? Sure. Atheism had two basic philosophies in its uh, application in our era, in the age in which we live. You know, no, you're not talking Let about atheism or as a religious thing. You're now. talking Let about a political... How do you know what I'm talking about? I haven't said anything. Well, I'm a mind reader. <laughs> no, you're, no, you're no. a mind reader, all right. But listen, no. listen for a second now. I know your arguments in advance. Yeah, th well, if you do, then you must be deity. You can't know my arguments in advance because you've never Go talked to me. Go ahead and give them facts. I'm least. perfectly Good. willing to hear all about Stalin all over again. I, mean, I want you to hear about somebody else. I want you to hear about... 
a man who gave copies of, I'm sure, one of your idols, Frederick Nietzsche's book, Man and Superman. No, I don't like yeah. Nietzsche at all. No, well, he was a god as dead boy. And Nietzsche, I is don't care, the what idol of think. Adolf Hitler. The atheism of Nietzsche, taught to the Wehrmacht and to the Germans, produced the extinction of oh, 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 Jews. Oh, oh. No, no. And no, produced no. the murder. No. Now the murder of World War II. Germany That's was a Christian produced. country down the line. No, Don't you no, dare no, say no, no, Germany no, no, was no. ever dominated by atheism. It was by Adolf Hitler. A Adolf Hitler happened to be a Roman Catholic Jew. To this day, he rejected. has not been excommunicated by the Roman he Catholic Church. It. And the Roman Catholic Church supported the rise of Nazism from the very inception of Nazism up no. to the point that they saw that they had a rival in Hitler who wanted to take over I uh, deny, that religious I deny on. the slander. Oh, I, I deny what you deny. I deny, uh, I deny the slander that the Roman Don't Catholic you Church dare say that Germany the was ever an atheist. I said that under atheistic philosophy, no, there was no by atheistic Hitler. philosophy was. altered by Hitler. You have. Did you ever read Mein Kampf? Did you? Yes, ma'am. Did you? Did you answer me? Yes or of no? Of course, you know. I have read probably did you read books it? that you read, and then I you have read probably Mein Kampf? read it twenty years. You read ago, Mein Kampf? I'm older than you are. You read Mein yes, Kampf uh, several times. Then you're aware library. of the fact that Adolf Hitler said in Mein Kampf, "I it listen, matter listen, what he said. madam, listen." He it said, matters, in Kampf, who supported he him and who said, put him in power?" You know, wait, we're on Hitler now. No. He said in Mein Kampf, "I am not out to destroy religion or Christianity." I am out to destroy religion root and branch. That's not the statement of a Catholic. That's the statement of an atheist like you. I'm sorry. This is not the statement of an atheist, and it is not what happened in Germany, and you know it. You didn't you read Mein Kampf, Kampf, madam. You go ahead and pick out a sentence I don't from believe Mein you. Kampf. I can't. Uh, give me the date, the version of it, whether it was unexpurgated, what page it's on, in what connotation it was. I could give you. I could you give you. I could give you the same. You don't know because you, you do the believe. same thing with your biblical uh, authority that you preach. No, ma'am. Pick out I'm not a sentence sit here. or a phrase. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you. Tell me what my comfort is. You have just you have alienated every Jew in New York. Now you're alienating oh, you're every trying, German in New York. You're trying to get me to alienate and alienate the Jews. And no, you, you have already done that. No. I don't. You, you don't need any of my help. Now you have just finished calling the Germans an atheist nation. I didn't say and that. And that the atheists killed six million Jews. I Ooh, did not Lord. say that. I did not say that, madam. You certainly did. No, I didn't. I said and I that. I object to the use of the word madam, particularly in New York. Are you married? Mrs. Murray. Are you married? No, but I'm a, I am not a madam. You're married. I am not a man. Oh, well, you use it in an unfortunate, vulgar sense. I'm using it in the proper sense, well. madam. I simply mean that Adolf Hitler was not a Christian. He did not Catholicism. He followed the philosophy Adolf of Nietzsche. Hitler. He was an atheist. Down the line, he has never made any like you to atheism. And there was no atheism in the whole... Jews. You're damn right. He did. He did. A Roman Catholic and a Roman no, no. Catholic... No, 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 no. no. An atheist. Look, at least be honest. If never. he was an atheist, don't call him a Roman Catholic. Never. But he wasn't a Roman Catholic. He was. He may have been in childhood, but... He rejected it. Thank you, John. And he has, as I say now... Come on, John. Who, the who supported Hitler? Who signed a pact with Hitler? And what uh, what stay the with the point. bishop supported Hitler? Madam, right now, wait, stay with the point. Him. Stay with the point. Hitler as uh, was not an atheist. He did not kill Jews as an atheist. Madam, know that. Madam, he said. No. Mine no. I, I would agree right with that. Right at this point, nothing to do with them being an atheist. No, wait a minute. The wait, Jews wait, were killed. No, wait a minute. Not the Jews all. as an inferior race. But he followed the philosophy of, philosophy of Nietzsche, who was an atheist, who said inferior well, races must be killed. I'm going to have an argument as to whether Nietzsche was an atheist or whether he was an atheist. Or right, that's your interpretation of Nietzsche, and and you've interpreted you've interpreted every single Mrs. year Murray. tonight in the sickest Mrs. Murray. possible way. Mrs. Murray, did you take now, a bachelor? Did you that. take a bachelor of arts course in college? I'll tell you what, I graduated from kindergarten. Does that please you? No, but did you? You're very, very interested did in you? how many degrees I got and whether or not you're going to have this no. space to no, play no, 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 no. I'm interested in whether or not you I'm not interested in that. Did you take a course no, in philosophy? No, I went through kindergarten. Does that help you? Did you take a course in philosophy? Does that help you that I went through kindergarten? Nothing will help me with you right now except huh? the answer to a question. Did you take a course in philosophy? I refuse to answer you. On the grounds it may tend to incriminate No, I took, I exactly, I took 20 hours of philosophy. Then you know me to be an atheist. Oh, fool. Ah. No. Oh. No, no. Uh, better stop now. Let's you take can, another call. You can make any kind of charge that you want to because Nietzsche is not here to defend himself. Let's, Let's take another call, please. Hello? 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 Yes. 
Reverend Martin seems to be a very vital and enthusiastic man. He doesn't seem at all morose or depressed. And yet he has claimed that he is in possession of the knowledge that millions of people, perhaps hundreds of whom he knows personally, including, of course, all his many Jewish friends, are condemned to eternal damnation. This seems to me even worse than knowing that perhaps a loved one is dying of cancer. Uh, I'm just very curious to know how can he maintain such good spirits in the face of all this uh, devastating information. I can answer the question, ma'am, by saying this, that I preach the gospel of Christ. I have for a number of years. He's preached the gospel I, of Reverend Martin. Ma'am? Has nothing to do with Christ. John, are you moderating this? Was the question addressed to me? Yes, I am. Have I yet interrupted right, Mrs. Murray's well, question? You haven't. She has, too. So but not we're all on the phone. Go ahead. Not when they come on the phone. Well, I, not, in other words, you have a special distance. On the phone. phone on the phone, yes. I answered the question. Uh, the question is this. I, I, have, a great, I have a great concern for those, who are, who, for those who are outside of Christ, for those who have not accepted Christ as their Savior. That is why I preach the gospel. That is why I have concern for them. The fact that you may describe me as you do and that I don't seem morose, I'm not morose about it because I believe it's the greatest message in the world and I proclaim it. No, 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 no. I, now you know that you're, you're, you're talking around her question. No, I want people to come to No, me. wait a minute. Now, wait. Let, let me ask you this question. The lady is still on. I, I want to ask you this. Uh, are you saying that people of the Jewish faith, when they pass on, and you believe in the heaven, a hereafter? Almost a true. Our Lord okay. taught this. Fine, fine. <laughs> now, wherever this hereafter is, you believe that the Jewish people will not go there. I believe. Wait, hold, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. I, I believe this teaching. It is Christ's doctrine. I think. Well, I must say this. That if, and I doubt very much whether Jesus or God or anyone else has taught this except Reverend Walter Martin, I think, New I, I think it is absolutely shocking to say that all of the Jewish people are second-rate citizens unless they swing over to the Reverend Walter Martin. I never Martin. said that. The New yeah. Testament specifically says that Jesus Christ came as God's Messiah to save a lost world. If the world doesn't want to accept him, they are rejecting God because they reject and then, his son. In other words, God is a bitter person and is not going to let the Jews enter heaven. No, he's not going to let anybody enter heaven who does not recognize his love in Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, then you should be extremely upset and morose because it's quite inconceivable that there will ever come a time when the whole world will follow Christ, just as there will probably not come a time when the whole world will be atheist. I assure you, ma'am, that I am very upset about the condition of the world. Where are the going to go? When they, or where are they going? These John, you keep riding the hobby, and you are creating the image in the minds of the people here that unless people agree with me, they're going to hell, and that's not what I said. Well, where are they going? Where are they going? Where do that? Just, you're where you're are trying are to create going? the image. No, no. Where are they going? People who reject Jesus Christ Jews. as their Savior. Jews. Jews or Gentiles. I know. Let's talk about Both the of Jews. them. Both of them. Why because do you, the Jews why are you have their own the Jews? solution? No, because they have their because own the solution. feel they're going to get someplace. Yeah, I believe... Well, go tell me. Where do they go, then? I believe... They don't go to heaven. All right. I believe that any Jew or Gentile who rejects Jesus Christ as Messiah must go to hell. I believe this. What Thank you, lady. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you Jewish? Me? Yeah. I am of mixed background. Well, then you're half of you're going someplace, and the other half can be with me. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll see you there. Operator? Uh, hello. Uh, hello, long time? Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to speak to the Reverend Martin. He's listening to you right now, sir. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about Jesus and the Christ and so forth, and I would like to ask him, did he realize that an Egyptian god by the name of... Uh, Turn your radio down, sir. I think it was this, sir. Please. Thank you. That an Egyptian god by the name of, I think it was uh, Osiris, or Isis, Isis it was, was worshipped in southern Europe in the same manner that Jesus and Mary came to be worshipped later on, and also that the original text of the Halosis describes Jesus as being a black man with a humpback and rather ugly face. The original text of what, sir? Of the Halotis by Josephus, the yes. Jewish historian. Yes. Did you know that? 
I was not aware of the description of Jesus in Josephus as black and having a hump on his back. And the reason I'm not aware of it is I have read Because the text was changed by, I presuppose, the uh, church fathers who later wanted to create Jesus as a European image which was unsuitable for the uh, people of the Palestine area. At that well, the, only time. Thing, the only thing I can say to you is this, sir, that the earliest copies of Josephus in existence do not have the vegetable right. that you have. Thank, 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 thank you both. very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Uh, uh, there's <laughs> tremendous authority, I think, uh, for this concept of a black Jesus Christ. And one of the things that... Uh, that uh, You I'm don't even believe he existed. No, but uh, if we're going to talk about Fagin from Dickens, well, we can talk well, about that's Fagin. That's completely different. No, it isn't. It's, it's the same man thing. Dickens is fiction. But there are many, many ideas of a black Jesus Christ. You, uh, you're illogical I want, because I want to, uh, you don't accept... I have a question uh, for you, Walter. I've never asked this question before. Jesus is the Son of God. That is correct. Right? right? That is what the Bible teaches. Right. Right. Let me right. take physical yeah. confrontation. Let me Mary. take away yeah. Come on, will you, Madeline? <laughs> Relax a moment. Now, one step by step. Jesus is the Son of God. Uh -huh. And Jesus was a Jew. Correct. So we must assume that God is a Jew. No. Why not? Because the scripture tells us that God begot Christ through the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and that he chose Was the Jewish, Jewish yes, he chose the Jewish people as his chosen race to express salvation to the world. Well now you do you mean that he's going to sell them out now? He hasn't sold them out. What well, you're telling me they rejected they don't, him. If they don't if they don't change They rejected him. No, no, I'm sorry. Sure. I'm sure. The Jews, I'm the sure. Jews no. Jesus. The fact remains that the Jews uh, <laughs> were selected by God, or rather, two people of the Jewish faith, Joseph and Mary, were selected to be the parents of Jesus, his only begotten son. Right. And then Jewish. all of a sudden, we find now from you, Walter, that you have been able to locate in the Bible, and I'm not saying that it isn't in there. I have, gee, I know experts that can come up here and find things in the Bible that you can't find, and you find things that they can't find. But it comes down to this, that if there is a God, and I think you will agree with me that according to all uh, opinions, I know my grandmother, who was a Methodist, she always referred to God as being good, don't you? Of course. Fine. Well, if this is a good God, do you mean to tell me that he would want to punish the little boys and girls that are born of Jewish parents today who not, know nothing whatsoever about Jesus Christ except something that their parents might have met or the Christian boy or girl next door might have mentioned? And you're going to say that if this child dies, it cannot go to heaven because are it had... Oh, you said that nothing there's about a choice the to go to hell. Nothing about the children. Oh, I see. When is a person an adult? When, a, per uh, when a person is capable of accepting or rejecting the record of Scripture. What happens to the little Jewish boy? Oh, let me finish. Yes, go ahead. A scripture tells us that a person has an opportunity to accept or reject. I did not say the children were lost. No, well, where do they go? A children child. die, you know. Yes, I know. Many times. A year-old child. Well, our Lord said, where did the year our, Lord child said our Lord said that it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Well, where do they go? To heaven. Oh, well, then there's a lot of Jewish children up in heaven. I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, I see. Okay. But their fathers and mothers can never make it. No one who rejects the there Savior of the world can make it. That's your answer. Um, the, thing, <laughs> the, thing that, the thing that is so interesting to me is that everybody <laughs> thinks, wild. Well, everybody, wild. That everybody thinks that this is so terrible for a Christian to say, but the Jews said it for thousands of years. Yes, but you know that you're separating, now you're separating the children from their parents, and then you have the poor Jewish kids up there in a Christian foster home in heaven, and their parents going to hell to No, fire. no, I didn't do that. God did it. No, I didn't do it either. I never said he did. I said. Well, you did say. Wait a moment. <laughs> That's where you go. I you go exactly, to hell. I say what well, exactly. What hell like? Let me. Let me. Well, I don't want to get into that, John, because I'm not going to. <laughs> You're not going to, to, not going to, to experience it. it empirically. I prefer to, to, to leave that to the description of our Lord, but I know that... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm relying on you describing the what Bible the Lord describes is. hell as the separation from God. It describes hell as a type of fire we don't know on earth. It describes hell as punishment. It describes hell as the uh, an orbital... You burn to death? No. It's a place what where people do? mash their teeth, though. What do you There's do? There's a lot of wailing and mashing. You know, that's a teeth. figure of speech. Well, what, what do you do in hell? In other words, you're, you're suffering. What do you do in hell if there's a fire? I don't know, John. I wasn't there. 
What? But you're the authority. I'm still no, cop out now. I'm only speaking with biblical perspective. Fine. And I meant you're the you're the theologian. I just you're the expert. expert. I just described it's fire. The fire that people are darkness. always the kind of fire burned. that we don't know on earth. Yeah, what it, kind it, of fire is that? Well, the Bible doesn't give us any chemically defined flames, but Jesus said <laughs> it is everlasting flames. Then, in other words, you are constantly in pain. You're burning up all the time too. I would say it is constantly suffering. But you see what I can't understand. Gee, that's is enough, that's I would like to, to get rid of Christianity. No, I would like to understand. I would like to understand this point. In the Old Testament, Judaism taught that they were the channel of salvation to the world, and that one had to come to them and accept their covenants in order to be redeemed. That's in all their literature and commentaries. Now, the Jews teach this and taught it historically up to the Christian era. The Christians teach it for the next 2,000 years, but you're jumping on the Christians for teaching that rejection of Christ will send a person to hell, but you won't go back and criticize the Jews in the Old Testament. Well, but right everybody now, else I'm dealing in 1968, right here. But you have a parallel I'm case. Asking, and I'm asking you questions, and you're the authority. You've right. admitted it to me. I didn't say I was an authority. You, you, you gave have. me the honor. You gave me the honor. No, you certainly have. You've constantly thrown it at, at, at uh, Madeline. You ask her what her uh, authority is. You how many hours of theology? I, I, I only... Well, the Bible she doesn't know a darn thing as far as you're concerned. No, no they, I don't say that. Knows. No, sir, John. I you know, I that. don't ask her those tough questions. You notice, John, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said that Mrs. Murray is ignorant of theology and the Bible. All right. So she you're is. the only one that was no. ignorant here. I Therefore, didn't, I didn't know that. what it is. I didn't say that. I'm ignorant. Well, I'll go along with that. Tell me about that. Let me ask you something. <laughs> is there a stage, is there a stage down to, uh, to hell? Pardon? Is there an intermediate stage down to hell? No. You, you, mean, you, get, not, you go right there. Not according so, to the Bible. Then Why are you so preoccupied with how Mrs. Murray doesn't even believe it exists? Well, I'm very, very interested that now you're going to offend the whole Roman Catholic Church. You're, you've got the Germans against you. You know, I have, not, I have not. I have not. You've been doing your level best to get now, everybody no, against I'm me. Very, very That's not going to work. Are, are you or are you not? You're the one that's against every religion. You the Catholic doctrine of going to perdition for just you, a little time you, in Mrs. order Murray to pray or are, money to get you. You, right. Mrs. Murray, are against all religion, and you are trying to make it look as if I, a minister of Christ, am against religion. Religion in general, when you're the one who gets it, one who speaks and acts in the name of our Lord, and who gave you permission to do this? He did. Scripture, and he did. He did. He did this personally in the scriptures, or through the scriptures. Yes, through the scriptures. Uh, I, I just have to pick you up on one more thing. You you mentioned Jews and Gentiles will not go to heaven. In other words, those that do not believe in Jesus Christ as Savior, as Savior. Now, a Jew cannot believe in Jesus Christ as a Savior. Oh, quite a number of them have. Jews. No, you're talking about those that are converted. Just because you become a Christian doesn't mean you stop being a Jew. Oh, come, come. <laughs> Do I have to wait <laughs> Rabbi Hollander up again? No. You are, you I can Rabbi believe. Hollander or, is, is uh, awake, please have him call up. Or if... Uh, if uh, Rabbi Aaron Pearl is awake, please have him call up because we must have that. Could I, could me, I explain something? No, wait, let me, let me get this straight. Yeah, go ahead. In a moment, please. Okay. In other words, you were saying to me, Reverend Walter Martin, if a Jew becomes a Christian, he is, can still be a Jew. Yes, sir. All right. I, I won't debate that. I'll answer the that. question. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll expound on the question. Point. You just yeah. did. Oh, wait, I have to expound <laughs> on one point. A Jew is not just a religion. A Jew is a member of a Mediterranean Semitic group You're talking that about the derives religion. from Abraham. We're talking about the religion, right? Oh, that's a different story. Okay. Oh, then you, you, you oh, back backtrack on that. Right? Okay, no, I'm not backtracking. <laughs> I'm answering the well, question. What are you doing? I'm simply telling you that a person can be a Jew, a member of a synagogue, circumcised, bar mitzvah, the whole thing. Means wait, nothing. wait, yes, it does to a Jew. Oh, no, come on, look. Everybody is circumcised today. I'm speaking religiously the as a Jew. Uh, I'm saying as a Jew. All right, you can ahead. be all these things. Then you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are rejecting Judaism's practice, but you are not rejecting the fact that you are a child of Abraham and that you are historically a member of the Jewish race, so to speak. All right, let's take another call here. Ooh. Even Howard Bayer is, is, is published. Even John Powers is completely puzzled. John doesn't know what to... John is, is a good Methodist, and he doesn't know what to... Frank Fisher, he doesn't know what's going to happen to him. Frank, you're not going to be up there with John Powers and Howard Bass. 
they got another place for you. You know, I have a granddaughter who's one quarter Jew, and I just wonder what's going to happen to her. She's one quarter Jew, one quarter Roman Catholic, one quarter uh, Presbyterian, and one quarter atheist. And that little girl is going to be in an awful lot of trouble <laughs> once she makes leaves the scene. Well, all I can do is Sears Robot Catalog <laughs> look up to see if they've got some equipment there that could straighten the whole thing out. All I can say is, hi uh, there. Hello, Long John. Yes. Long John, I'm listening to your program with a group of people. And uh, we've had the, uh, you had on your program a little while ago, the joke of the century. Do you recall, John, about 15 minutes ago, uh, Reverend Martin accused Mrs. Murray of total, ig uh, almost total ignorance of, right. total ig of yeah. the scriptures? Right. And I don't know how it got by you, Mr. Neville, but do you know what her answer was? She said, they argued the point back and forth, and finally, <laughs> she said, if I am ignorant, or words to that effect, I thank God for it. Yes, I heard that myself. Well, how did you let it get by, Mr. Neville? We're just you know, in this all miracle. Woman who so wouldn't who jump right not to stuff. Stuff. No, I heard it. I heard it myself. Well, wasn't that funny? I never heard any of the... No, I, I heard it myself, and I was going to mention it, but I... It got away from you, because just then I think you had a commercial or something. No, I, I remember yeah. hearing it distinctly. Well, John, did you ever hear anything funnier? Well, let me see. Do you want to comment on it, Madeline? Yeah, well, first I want to comment <laughs> it. Why... You know I'm a woman and I'm a feminist, <laughs> and why is it always a woman uh, who tries to pick this up and make oh, something Oh, dear. Up? When oh, what I'm trying to do... But don't, but don't laugh at other people, Mrs. Martin. You've had a great... Wait a minute, honey, don't talk, uh, uh, Thanks, Long John. Thank thanks you. for many good programs. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we'll take another call. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I, I was just going to talk about what the woman said about thank God. Okay, thank you. And, uh, no, there's another part. Uh, as a Catholic, may I tell you, and everybody can rest happy tonight... Uh, the way I was brought up was, uh, and the way I was to believe in religion. Yes. All religions. If you lived uh, your life according to the way that you were taught, and you were brought up, and you were, you followed all the tenets of your religion, no matter what it was, you are just as saved as a Catholic, a Jew, or what. It doesn't make any difference who you are. If you follow the tenets of the original God, God is God. Do you understand? I mean, yeah. all of us believe in God except Mrs. Murray and uh, her ilk. Why do you use the word ilk? Well, because that's the way you put it, isn't it? Mm, I don't know. I think you use that in a pejorative... Wait, will you listen a moment? Sure. I think you use that in a pejorative sense, don't you? I don't, I don't even know what pejorative means. Well, I don't know what ilk means, so go ahead. <laughs> if you can explain pejorative, then you can explain ilk. <laughs> all right. That's the way I always heard it. But, I mean, all right. I think you've made a good point, she, though. She feels, even she'll be saved. Thank you very much. She really well, believes We're it. glad that Madeline will be up there with John Powers and Howard Thayer. You know, I bet we'll all be there together. That, well, I don't know about Walter Martin. Hey, can I say something to you? Yes. Uh, Pitchman, you're doing a good job tonight. Uh, oh, did you call me yesterday morning? You bet. Well, now, wait. Now, hold it. Don't get off the phone. Oh, why? Right. Now, wait a moment. break my back? No, no, no. Now, come on. I didn't do that yesterday morning, and I have no intention okay. of trying it now. I'm asking you that... Where do you come off about me doing conference calls in the afternoon? Now, come on. Square off. I heard you. No, my dear. You want to know something? All right. One call I have made in the afternoon was to Bishop Pike. No, I didn't hear that. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't. No, honestly. <laughs> you see, that's that's where you were wrong. Uh, I don't know where you work, whether you work here or whether you work with me at OR. But I do not do shows in the afternoon. John, I know. Look, you know, pitch man you are, pitch man I could be, a pitch woman. Yes. Go, where you want to put it? Well, go ahead. Okay, let's go and let it go with that. Okay, bye-bye. Right? And bye now. Thank you. Uh, I have a telegram here. Why is everyone, including Christian or Jews, who do not accept the Reverend's assertion that Christ is God, lost or damned? This hardly seems calculated to promote brotherhood, signed Mrs. William Wingate. Uh, would you care to comment on that, uh, Reverend? Our Lord said, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Our Lord taught that he had come to save men. If they rejected him, they would be lost. We've got to get one point very clear. Hell and the judgment of God comes not arbitrarily, but because people refuse to accept the love of God. Mrs. Murray laughs at it and can't understand how God can be just, and yet she's a lawyer. All right. Now, would you read that next telegram, please? Yes, Long John Neville. Uh, Pope Paul's encyclical stated, Descendants of Jews are not guilty of death of Christ in attempt to root out anti-Semitism. This, I think, is what I stated myself. Grace, as defined by Webster's Dictionary, when applied to theological discussions, means the free, unmerited love and favor of God that we have not earned or deserved by our performance, God's love or God's approval. These are given to us as a gift from heaven. Reverend Martin may find reference to section of Talmud in the life of Jesus by Marcello uh, Gravity. Finally, Mrs. Murray, if dedicated truly to freedom of thought, should free her own and sit down and read Summa Theologica by Aquinas and Atheism by Etienne Borne. Do not I've use read name. both of them. Thank you very much, ladies. There was a, well, there's no name in that, don't they? Use it no. All right, let's take another call here. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, can I speak to Long John? This is he. This is Long John speaking, lady. Oh. Uh, Did you? Do you have your radio on? Oh, very far away, but I. Maybe that's disturbing you. Oh, it does. Turn it down, please. One minute. Please. Yes, I'll wait for you. Yes, sir. Go. Thank you very much. Uh, We're talking with Madeline Murray. Yes. Sir. And the Reverend Walter Martin. Go ahead, lady. Uh, I think he's that dumb and blind because if people would know the meaning of the real God, they would all love uh, trust in one God. They say God is spirit. spirit. Well, then, then you disagree with Walter Martin, too. Oh, everyone should know there is one God in unity. Well, how do you know it? I studied the Kabbalah. I see. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're happy that you gave us that information. Thank you, my dear. Good morning. Good morning. May I help you? Uh, yes, is it the Lawrence on show? Yes, this is he. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, ask a question. What is the question? Why don't you turn your radio down, sir? Sure. sure. Uh, I'd like to make a statement, actually. Uh, the All right, what is your statement? The Reverend Martin uh, mentioned that uh, Judaism uh, says that only Jews would be allowed to have salvation. This is, of course, erroneous. In the, the Old Testament. Historical Judaism, a standard of moral conduct was necessary for any non-Jew to get into heaven, but not being a Jew, not accepting all the tenets of Judaism. I just thought it was a point that should be... All right. Made. Thank you, sir. Is it possible to comment on uh, Yes, certainly. Please do comment. I would suggest that the gentleman who made that statement read carefully the prophets of the Old Testament and the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, and he will find when he reads these the specific statements that I am the Lord, beside me there is no Savior, and that it was necessary for the Gentile to be circumcised and join in faith with the Jew if he were to be saved. That's clearly said at least a hundred times. Yeah, but what he's saying, though, is that in relation to this, there were just certain rules of conduct for him to accept. No, he had to, sacri he had to, to uh, participate in the sacrifices. He had to become, in effect, a Jew. <clears throat> That's clearly said. No, 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 because you just finished saying that this is a racial thing along with uh, an ethnic or religious it's thing. It's both, both racial, and but they had to confirm to the religion. You know, incidentally, one of the things that you, you keep saying uh, that is fascinating to me, uh, if you go into uh, just India... Now, uh, you can find really, literally, hundreds of thousands of persons who have never heard a word about Christianity. I've been there. And uh, despite this fact, you are condemning all of these people who have never even been able to hear the word uttered. We know they'll never get to have it. They no, will no, never. No. You are condemning the them moment. down the line because the they moment. are unable to come through Jesus Christ no, to saving grace. Just a moment. See? There's something that must be stated here. A person who has never heard the gospel, never been exposed to the gospel of Christ, does not go to hell because they have never heard the name of Jesus. How do you know that? I'm trying to rule St. Martin. You have a quote, Mrs. Murray. Oh, come on. You Mark, have you, Mark, you become Mark, so personal? Personally. But these are the rules of St. Martin. No, they're not. 
I don't know of any I'm, other Christian who... who I'm, I'm trying to... I'm, well, you don't read Christian theology. You don't know anything about it. That's why you don't know these things. I have read... <laughs> you couldn't possibly read the number of books on this that I have read at any time at all. I would hate to get into a question about how much you read. You can, you can verify quotes from Body my accounts or all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's not get into the relative reading. Now, you're the one who just finished uh, verifying something from my Let me get into the one point. No reference. Let me get into the point that in question. A person does not go to hell because they have not heard the name of Jesus. Men go to hell, who have never heard the gospel, because of the revelation of God in nature, which you ignore, the revelation of God, which is obvious in their They're conscience. They're going to hell, though. Because of their rejection of the light God has given them. He's so giving you all life. these people are still going to hell in he, India. Is this right? Any person in India, right Every now. Every single one. Nothing. They're all going to hell. I'm not on the witness stand. Any person, any person. I'm not going to be badgered either. Any person in India who does not believe in the gospel of Christ because they have never heard it is going to be judged on the basis of the knowledge which they possess of the living God through nature, through revelation of conscience, and by virtue of the fact that God says he has revealed himself and they don't accept him. So, let's take another call here. So don't say I said Hello. I didn't. Hello. Hello. Hello, I'd like to speak. Yes, may I help you, sir? John. Yes, sir. Uh, am I on the air? If you turn your radio I down... Turn it on. I had to keep following the program. One moment, please. Yes, sir. Please do that. And uh, this gentleman is turning his radio down, and then we'll get yes, back. Sir. Yes. I want to uh, speak to Mrs. Murray. Yes, go ahead, sir. Mrs. Murray. She's listening. I, uh... Uh, resented very much that uh, Robin Martin said that you were ignorant. The whole concept of traditional religion is barbaric. One doesn't have to be a profound scholar to appreciate that statement. And uh, I thought he showed himself to be quite ignorant when he, he was talking about the Durgin show, Bear a Son, and his name should be called Emmanuel. Now, the Hebrew for a virgin, an untouched woman, is the Thura. But the word that the Old Testament used is Alma, meaning a young woman of marriageable age. It has nothing to do with her virginity. I beg your pardon, sir. I was quoting the New Testament. I did not make reference to the Isaiah passage in the Hebrew. I quoted the Greek Parthenos as used by St. Matthew, and therefore what you are saying is not accurate. It is accurate uh, and because that is sir, 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 may I say uh, that? An Alma shall conceive and sir, bear a son, and his name sir, shall be called Emmanuel, and that's sir, where you get the Christ from. Sir, could I make a statement? In the first place, the New Testament, Testament and the Old Testament is a Jewish document in all and the Christian people have taken this document and made a religion out of it. You, sir, I did not say that Mr. The slightest sir, knowledge, sir, the golden bow will let you know that it, 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 the, the whole traditional religion is a sir, institution. For instance, you say, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. That's cannibalism, man. Sir, are you Percy Sutton? Why don't you be wise? Are you Percy Sutton? That? Are you Percy Sutton? Why would you ask me such a question as that? Because a Percy Sutton calls from time to time, and I thought you were Mr. Sutton. Are you? Why would you ask me a personal question what? like that? Is that personal? Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, personal wait, 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 is that personal? It certainly is. Why should I divulge my name on the... I don't on want you to program? divulge your name. I merely asked you if you are Percy Sutton. Of course I'm not. Okay. But I speak with knowledge. I guess that doesn't mean anything wrong to call... Are you offended if somebody asks you if you're Percy Sutton? I resented that uh, Reverend Martin called Mrs. Murray ignorant. I, I think didn't. he's very profound. Oh, oh. May I, uh, may yes, I come? Not, uh, uh, he'll answer you now, sir. Sir, I want you to understand something, and uh, John's tape tapes all of these things. Oh, I did Lord, not call... Again. Well, I'm uh, confident... I, I am very uh, <laughs> dedicated to something you as a lawyer should appreciate. A court transcript. Evidence. I did not say you were ignorant. I said you were you ignorant. Guess. Go ahead, call me here. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. It'd make you feel too good. <laughs> I think that you are... I know you are ignorant of Scripture. That's what I said. That's all. 
Thank you very much, sir. I'm delighted by your interpretation of the scriptures, and I'm certain that many of the ministers who are listening in are delighted by your interpretation of scriptures tonight. Well, the ministers that would associate with you, uh, who do not believe in the record of the Bible, who spend their time trying to tear it to pieces, who are aiding and giving comfort to people like you, who would destroy the very foundation You're against of religion. Too. I feel these men are as much. I feel these are as much Jews. You're against Jews, Jews and you're against children. No, you're no, against I'm not. Germans, no, I'm and not. Now you're against the no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh, certainly, the no, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. Liberal no, ministry isn't against radio moderators. No, ma'am. No, that's because he's on your program. I am not against. Uh, I am not against any of the things you're talking about, and you are distorting the entire issue. But one thing does interest but me. But you are for it. Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am, I am to the end. He's save. the savior of the world. Yes, indeed. And that, that I am. Sin. Well, you bet. And he could save you. You too, but you won't. I don't have them. any. You don't want to be. I don't have anything. Yeah, uh, well, of course not. Well, I, I doubt that, and I don't think you believe it either. But this I do know. I'm to me, sin free. I repeat that. I'm very, very serious. <laughs> to the audience who can't see him, John is in hysterics right now. I just want to bring this point out. Atheism has produced in the last 50 years two beautiful philosophies, communism and Nazism, and you're welcome to them. You know this isn't true. I know it is. You know that fascism is the Roman Catholic Church persona. Oh, now you don't like the Catholics, do you? No, I don't like the Catholics. Okay, I don't like well, now, now I'm glad you don't like somebody, because you've been accusing me of disliking everybody. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mr. Weber? Yes, can you speak a little louder? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. I uh, listening to your show a while ago, I'll say about an hour. Yes. The Reverend made a statement uh, pertaining to... The, exist, the nothing comes from nothing. Could you repeat that, please? Yes. Will you try that again? I simply said, I could have said it in a philosophical sense. <laughs> Ontology predicates sufficient causality. From nothing, nothing comes. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, there's one fault in that. You said that according to the scientists, uh, this, they believe that this is so. Did you not say that? I said, according to the basic laws of physics, this is true. Uh, incorrect, sir. Uh, I have a degree in uh, physics. All right, would you kindly, uh, if you have a degree in physics, no, would you sir. kindly, if you have a degree in physics, yes, sir. which of course you don't. I don't, I don't have one, and I'm perfectly willing to listen to a to a qualified well, physicist. I, I just want, I just to, want to, to ask you a question. Definition, sir. Would you, uh, would you? Uh, just I don't want to go into anything deeply. I will just say this: uh, Einstein, along with two other scientists, have worked for many years on uh, many of his, uh, many of the great scientists' hypotheses. Along those lines, uh, the theory, well, with the theory of uh, his interchangeability of matter and the theory of the speed of light, they came up with a theory which can be verified and which has been proven over the past few years and which has been written about, that the universe is self-contained, it, it does have a shape, and within that uh, there is uh, the universe and there are planets. Beyond that there is something called nothing, a force field beyond that. And uh, I'm not going to go on that. I'm, I'll sir, go to that. sir, but the can I ask you a question as a physicist? I'm trying to get my thoughts clear. Can I ask you a question as yes. a physicist? You are aware of Einstein's statement that the universe is finite? Yes, sir. Then you are aware of the fact that Einstein maintained that the law of relativity, which he discovered, E equals mc square, proves that the universe is not eternal but created? Uh, yes, sir, but created from what and how? Einstein and no other physicist who ever breathed except Fred Hoyle, that I know of, ever said that an entire universe of interchangeable matter and energy appeared spontaneously out of nothing. Oh, well, you would you give me the reference, sir? Would you give me the reference? Uh, but I will say this. WNBC, according to the scientists, according to physicists, uh, beyond the universe, uh, there appears nothing. Give me the reference in your scientific physics background which tells you that spontaneous uh, generation of energy will not go it. I will say this. It could be true. It's it it not true. Up in a library. I, look it up. I don't have to look up. Idea. Sir, I don't, sir, 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 sir I, don't, I don't have to look it up in the library. Thank because, you. Uh, Thank you, sir. Dr. You know. Frank, Dr. No, I don't. Dr. No, Frank no, Allen, professor of physics at the University of Manitoba, is an author of quite a number of papers on this subject. And Dr. Allen is a qualified physicist, a Ph.D. in the field, and teacher for and over 40 boy, years. Hung up with those and Dr. Are... Allen specifically states that the basic law of one of the basic laws of physics is that from nothing, nothing can come. And I want somebody to prove that from nothing, something. No, did. nobody. This is still okay, a theory. Well, but this is still a theory, and you know it. If you're going to try and tell me that from infinite void proceeded infinite energy, I submit that this is insane. I don't know whether this is what happened. You don't know either. You I have do. the greatest I do. I do. You know. God, God. 
Here we go. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And don't worry you about cover him. your ignorance by one word. Don't worry. God. Don't God worry about it. him. Don't worry about him because he's going to be present at your funeral. I'm not worried about him. Don't. I'm a little bit worried about you and the fact that you're able to influence the number of. Uh, I hope to persons. influence in the name of Christ all that I can. Oh, dear. Because you are influencing people contrary to the foundations of religion and precisely. Uh, hallelujah. I am very, oh, very wait proud. Oh, wait a minute. Hallelujah Please. now? I'm proud of John, you. did you hear that? If you don't understand. Hallelujah. Says, and the, the irony I want you I, to know that Mrs. Murray, Murray, Mrs. Murray just said in Hebrew, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Murray. I know praise the Lord. Lord. I'm with you all the way. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Yes. Hello, Long John. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the Nazarene gospel was stored by Robert Graves and Joshua Pedro. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with him. Yes, so they're very great scholars. Yes. Researched over 60,000 scholarly works on Christian origin. Yes. And um, they claim they have it authenticated that the Persian Gospels are far from the originalized. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that That's they are Greek piracies. Mm -hmm. And then the Reverend refers to... to I think you made a point. This has been discussed a number of times. Thank you. Hello. I, I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, you did not. Mr. Neville? Yes, hello. Yes, thank you. Uh, I've been trying to get you for a long time. Thank you. I'm glad you've uh, been able to get us. Thank you. Um, you had Mrs. Murray on. Yes, we do. Yes, and she says she's an atheist. And yet, about uh, 3.15, I've been trying she to... She said, I, I oh, my God. Me? Or she said, thank God. Yes. Yes, we heard that, ma'am. I not only say thank God, God, but I God say God hallelujah, I say amen, I say a number of things because uh, this is uh, uh, intended for humor, but that Christians are the most humorless people in the world. That point has been made before. Thank yes. you. I just wanted to call you on that line. Thank line. you very much. Thank you very nice much. Nice talking with you. Bye-bye. Good morning. You know, one of the things that happens constantly, and uh, this is a funny thing, is that the Christians and religionists have absolutely Hello? no sense Hold of humor. Hold on a moment, please. No sense of humor at all. You can't joke with them about their religion at any level. You can't tell, uh, you can't um, uh, have uh, religious cartoons, the religious jokes, everything. It falls flat in their face because these uh, people are so seriously intent on their insanity. Mr. Murray, can I ask you a question? You're interrupting me. <laughs> Are you Somebody finished? On the phone. Are you yes. finished? Well, something. Yes, go ahead. Uh, may I ask you a question? Please. What is it? No, I wasn't finished, but I lost the train. Hello? May I ask you a question? Just a moment, please. Mm -hmm. Would you consider that uh, there is something in life that is sacred? Let me think. No. I think. Uh, no, I think that almost everything has some element of humor in it. No, just, just, just minute, about uh, everything. There's something that you would reverence. Perhaps the I love, can't think of that you have your son, perhaps. I sometimes laugh at that. You would laugh at your love Some of that. Son? Sometimes I would, yes. And to your husband? But sometimes for my husband. And no, we have and, a door And, and uh, there would be... There nothing. are very humorous elements in this. You have to play it up. I bet you have a howl at Duck Howl. Oh. Oh, and chuckle at Hook and Ball and have hysterics at Ravensbrook. Well, I would you know, say one of them, but you're the one who... We think that there are things that are not funny. Well, we, let me and one of them is this. to refer to the Holy Spirit as the spook, which you do all the time. Yes, yes I do. Here is yes. one... Let's That's not this funny. One. Here's from Gula Dennis. Dear Long John, <laughs> tell Reverend Martin that the first Christians, the Nazarenes, were poor Jews. Further, that St. Paul name was Saul, and that he was a rabbi. Right. Therefore, when Reverend Martin makes bigot statements, he seems to forget about the origin of Christ who came, according to the Bible, from the house of David. Yours is ever, and the postscript is, I am not even a rabbi. Gula Dennis. May I quote? Surely. I am not bigoted. I am not anti-Semitic. I have simply stated the historical record of the New Testament. I believe God is love, but I believe when we reject his love in Christ, we must be prepared to face his justice. This is That's always the New Testament according to St. Martin, at all the time. What about according to the people that wrote it? You're not, you can't speak for them. Well, I'm quoting the text. You cannot speak for them. First off, you don't even know whether that text is accurate. Well, and then you keep quoting Greek when we're I dealing with one, Greek. I quoted one word. Well, that, that shows... So this, no, it means, it means that there was at least 
at least a minimum of one translation. Mrs. Mur Mrs. Murray. From the Jewish. Mrs. Murray. Uh, of that particular Mrs. era. Murray, since we're now on the subject of text, what was the New Testament written in? What was the language? I would be delighted to find out. You, you don't have know? any idea? You no. Do you? And this this New Testament Please. that you have. Oh, and this was this was yes. written the first year after G J C. Madam, you know what we have? Now you see again what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ happens to be sacred. You have just a minute. The Jesus idea Christ, idea just what a that first text happens in to be. Because it's never been uncovered. Yes, ma'am. We have before. a first century fragment, which by radiocarbon dating has been proven to be a first century first document. First century fragment. Right. Of the Gospel of John. Yeah. Yeah. How much of a fragment? I don't know. I haven't measured the thing, but I know it's got words in it that correspond perfectly to John's copy that we have now. But listen. Written in his own. When you refer. In Greek. When you refer. In Greek. Hello? When you refer to Jesus Christ. Stay on, lady. When you refer to Jesus Christ as J.C. This is what I don't understand. Here you are, a sinful woman who has never don't have a sin about yeah, me. who has never contributed anything to the history of the world except to boast that you have taken prayer in the Bible out of a public school I mean, all those and answers, in the name and in the here. name of Jesus Christ more universities, more hospitals, more schools, more colleges, more works of charity and love have in been the done. Entire era of history, have been done in the history of, Christian the history of the, world, any other time what, in the world. Mrs. Murray, are you contributing? I have contributed reading. I hope some reason. We have a person on the phone. Would you compare yourself, of course, to our uh, Lord well, favorably? No, oh, listen, I wouldn't even let him lift my boots. Jesus Christ has not influenced the total world. Uh, because Christianity has a very small hold on a very small part uh, of the uh, w total world population. And it always has. It's been extremely localized in Europe uh, and uh, then uh, over to the United States. And um, there's a kind of a, a funny version of it down in South America, which has to do uh, more with their own pagan religions down there than it has to do with the so-called Christianity because there are overlaps in that culture. So, actually, uh, I don't think that in the history of the world he has had as much a an impact as Confucius, or as Buddha, or as um, uh, uh, many of the other figures uh, of this kind. He, he is particularly known to us in our culture because we stress him. But uh, go to many other parts of the world, and he's completely unknown, has been. John, can I say something here? Yes, we only have a few minutes left. I'd like to get another caller to him. Mrs. Murray has been telling us all night that Jesus Christ does not exist historically, and I asked her a few moments ago if she would favorably compare herself to our Lord. Her reply was that she wouldn't let him lick her boots. That's true. I would like to figure out how... You want to say it again? Because how, you no, listen to the tape. No, I'll, I'll say it again. No, I would like to know how you account for the fact that you wouldn't let him lick your boots. If he because did, I... No. Oh, well, come on. Here we are back to your facetious arguments again, which have no substance. I am talking about the figment of your imagination, which you have created, and I'm talking about you as being the generic Christian. Uh, and uh, many, many of the characters... You know that Jesus that I would lick. Do you think that I would trade Madame Curie for uh, Ruth? Do you think that Jesus Christ or Moses. Let's take Moses. Do you think that Moses could come anywhere ne near Albert Einstein? Yes. Do you suppose that you're Jesus really Christ the Jews has now. done as much for humanity as Thomas Alva Edison? No, of course. Oh, go. Of me. course. Did you want to briefly comment? Yes, I just want to ask Mrs. Murray. A moment ago, she lists a string of names and religious characters and makes a comparison. I would like to ask her something. You don't think that Jesus Christ existed, and you don't think that uh, his religion... Even his story book moment. existed. Okay. Which All right. One I've Correct. All right. Uh, but yet a moment ago, unhesitatingly and unblushingly, you affirm first the historicity of Confucius, about whom we have even less data than Jesus Christ. How do you account for this? Now, this is your opinion. Again, and you're me not, me. now you are an expert on Chinese. No, ma'am, I'm an expert on comparative religion. You're an expert Quote on physics. No, I'm not. And you're an expert on no. Chinese history. No, no, you're an expert comparative on religion. religion. I didn't bring. You know, he said you two. said Confucius. Now I want to tell. Uh, let me tell you. Oh no, something. you said Confucius. You tell me how you know you just. Keep I will keep quiet. You have you with you a gentleman tonight. No, 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 no. Tell me you're the Confucius. I have You know what I brought along? I brought along nothing. I'm perfectly I agree willing. with that 100%. I am perfectly Not willing for you to send me a letter down in dear old Austin, Texas, and I will send you the historic proof for Confucius. I didn't bring it with me tonight. I'm not concerned about that. No, just one moment. I you don't have to You don't know anything Confucius. about it. You, go back, you, you are go back also to Austin to look it up. You are also an expert on education of Madeline Murray. No. I'm an expert on one thing. 
Madeline Murray. On St. Martin, version of the Holy Bible. Madeline Murray, with her Society of Separationists, makes statements and gets a lot of publicity on the idea... You hate she, that, don't you? No, I don't. I think you, you just a, love that. I think you have a right, I think you have a right to do it as an American. But you know what is objected to? It's objected to the vindictive and the malicious manner in which you attack all religion and clergymen okay. and then proceed to try and make no, it look no. as if you're a martyr. That's what everybody is tired here. We have a chance You're a novelty and you're going to wear off and very soon. It's been about 20 years of novelty. It'll be very soon when she wears off. I don't think so. I'm sorry, you've got the losing case. I don't think she'll wear off. I can't. Hello. Lose. Hello, Wong John. Could you speak a little louder, please? Yes, uh, Wong John. Uh, you've had Rabbi Howard on your program many times. Yes, sir, I have. And uh, you had him on tonight. And uh, uh, Reverend Martin, on the phone. And Reverend Martin uh, used him as an uh, trying to use him as an authority. Right. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question, Wong John. Yes, sir. Uh, the many times that Rabbi Howard has been on, has he not mentioned to you about the seven laws of Noah? that the Jewish religion does not believe that people who are not Jews automatically go to hell, that if they obey the seven laws of Noah, which are seven laws of morality, they also go to heaven? I must say that uh, I have never heard that. However, there is a possibility that I have forgotten the statement. I don't remember. Well, Did I, you I, I, wish, I wish you would... Uh, uh, you would call Rabbi Haldi. Well, we're not going to call anybody except we're going to call it a night in about three minutes. That, I think that uh, Reverend Martin is absolutely wrong when he tries to point out and say that the Old Testament says that people are not Jews automatically go to hell. It is Read not the true. Old Testament. It is a lie. It's one of the Nobody lies read that he has said tonight. Okay, sir. Thank you. Read the Old Testament. Thank you for calling. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hello. Yes, you have about a minute and a half. Well, I'll try to do it real fast. Thank you, sir. Uh, I just want to say to Reverend Martin that some of my best friends are uh, Christian ministers, so I'm prepared to to let him roll and make certain outrageous statements on the ground that he's probably a fool rather than a knave. Now it develops that he comes up with an argument for the existence of God, which he just repeated uh, in, in the Latin form about ontology and existence, I'm sure that a man of his background and knowledge knows full well that this argument has long since been uh, thrown into complete disrepute. That, that is not is true, not sir. Predicate. That's not true, sir. The deductive form of the argument has been, but the inductive form of the argument, as I stated, it has never been refuted.